We are live. Hey, Bernice. Hey, Bernice. How are okay, you? Okay, I'm not in. Let me refresh. What? Hold on. I clicked before you did it. So there we go. Oh. I'm getting it. It's spinning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hi. You're not supposed to click before I do. When I click, it takes us both in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello. Are you in? I'm in. Okay. Bernice, are you there, Bernice? Hi. First one here. Absolutely hey. perfect. Hey, Amy. Hello. Hello, my cousin. How are you? Is it raining in Bremerton? We are here. <laughs> got my lights on. Hey, I won't Sarah. look at the delay. How are you, Sarah? Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to get us. Here we go. Live. Oh, my goodness. Hello, Ivy. It's, I'm so glad you're here. Ivy's here. Oh, there's Ivy. All right. Sylvia, good evening. Okay. It's raining here, too. Did you try to get rid of? All right. I'm. I love the rain. I'm loving rain. it, too, Sarah. Awesome. We're just getting, uh, getting everybody just a moment to get in. Okay. All right. I'm going to turn off. Okay. We want you. Hi, Kathy. We want you ladies to know this is a lot of technology for a bunch of old broads. So <laughs> <laughs> we're working it out. <laughs> Hilaire, Karen. <laughs> what? You're not that, an old broad too? <laughs> that's <hilarious. laughs> this, is, this is Sarah's first time here. Everybody say hi to Sarah. Hey, Sarah. I'm so glad you're here with us. I invited her today. Ivy, thank you for greeting everyone. That's wonderful. Okay. Did you see those beads Ivy was making today? I did not, but I've been, oh. I have boho beads on my list if they're boho. Are you talking oh. about the glue plugs? Um, the what? They were to go on glue, to go like the pin for the glue. Oh, what? glue. Okay, apparently I, there? apparently I don't know what you're talking about. But I will say, oh, I, I believe okay. they were beautiful beads, but they looked really cool. They yeah, really cool, and um, yeah, that would be a good, that would be a fun live. Everybody making beads at the same time. <laughs> that would be one. Wouldn't that be a yeah? One? I would. I'm up for suggestions on the lives too. I do have a list. I do too. Uh, but it's it's always nice to have suggestions about things that we want to learn about or try together or i've been doing a lot of research on the boho beads and uh the different ways to make them sarah, and uh, i think i want to play with some tyvek mm, yeah um sarah do you have any i know you've got a couple of 12 by 12 card stocks do you have some plain paper <laughs> ivy just cleaned up my mess sarah if you've got some plain paper that would be great. If you have a stencil, um, mm -hmm. Sharon's going to work with stencils. But if not, she's going to show you how you can make one of your own with just paper. So if you've got some plain paper, um, if you've got an ink, ink. would be mm -hmm. great. Um, if you've got or gel for, crayons is fine, too. Um, some glue. And it could be glue stick. But if you've got like Elmer's glue or something that has a point. Um, yeah, just well, I don't think I'm doing the glue today. I think what no. they'll need is masking tape me, 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 or me. washi. Me, me, me. They'll need glue for mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You could use this if you have it, too, for the project I'm going to do. Yeah, but just the um, basic supplies so they can make it. And then, you know, if they want to embellish yeah. your things um, later. Sarah's just, just plain white is fine. Build her stuff. It, Sarah, it could also be a book page that you've uh, torn up or that's already torn up that you would like to use and not throw away. And it could be a piece of music paper, um, just some multiple <sighs> light colored pieces of paper. Uh, but yeah, printer I, paper is just fine. I should have given her some book pages or, today. 
or some some of these journal journal book pages because I yeah. love using these. They're always different inside. I so this is fine too. Without that, okay. So we don't want to kill too much time here. So let me um, say we appreciate all of you showing up and sharing your Saturday night with us. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, this is Saturday night live. <laughs> Did you ladies make yourself a drink? Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I have some grapes I'm happy to share with anybody. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, we've got, uh, I was going to say this is your happy place. So we give you pr permission to leave your troubles at the door and have a positive and uh, friendly chat. But the people that are here are the happy, friendly, positive people. So, you know, anybody comes in bringing all their troubles, they'll just, you know kick them in the behind and tell them this is their happy place. If you have, yeah, this is a happy zone. <laughs> yeah, happy zone. I like that zone. If you have a question or something that you want to make sure that Sharon or I see, um, please type it in all caps. Makes it a little easier for us to see. I'm trying to figure out where is my camera, but the, ah, oh, there it is. Um, Otherwise, you can chat with each other and that's a wonderful way to get to yeah. know each other. Yep. Um, chat, craft, chat, craft, chat, craft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, Sharon, I wanted to tell them a little bit about the joy book, but I'm wondering if we should wait towards the end to see if some of the mm -hmm. others, can, so we don't have to explain it several times. What do you think? Yeah, let's, that's fine. Let's wait till the end. That's great. Or the middle or, you know. So we decided to do it a little bit differently this week and try something out. We're going to try different formats to see what um, seems to jive the best and what you guys like the best. And so Sharon's going to teach us something that I'm going to learn along with you. And then I'm going to teach something that Sharon will learn along with you. So it's like two back to back tutorials, but yet we get to be live and interact. So um, that's fun. So take it, Sharon. All right. Um, I just have this here. So anybody that scrolls by knows where they're at. We are going to do some fun things with um, masking. And we're going to use some stencils and some stamps if you have them. Either one will work. Uh, the, a, a combination of the two will give you the best results, but it's really up to your imagination. Um, so I've actually got some things here I'm going to go through real quick. I'm going to show you kind of what we're going to make. Um, and everybody probably knows how to do this, but we'll go through um, that. Uh, and then we've got this. And I waited to do the big reveal with you guys here. So we're going to be doing something like this. Sorry, don't mean to and make I'm excited to see them. Oh, my goodness. Um, I'm so excited to see them. This one I actually put, because the black is dark, I actually put a little bit of that, um, the lightest pink oxide on it. So it also had some interest. So what we end up with is beautiful pages that we made ourselves. And then we have also these pieces if we don't do like a template that we're going to use over and over, but I, I prefer to do it this way. So then I have these pieces to embellish with also um, that. Okay, guys, do you see that? It is beautiful. That's um, really cool. I, it, I just couldn't be happier. Yeah. That's really cool looking. Any thoughts, Marianne? I like it. Yeah. Like well, it, it. And it's so easy. Yeah. So easy. So we're going to talk about, oh, I was waiting on this one too. So I used a little bit of washi tape here. You could use um, a light masking tape. If you have something that's stickier, just, um, you know, put it on your pants and get a little less tack on it, you know, and then peel it off. So it gets that little layer of fuzz. Look, oh my goodness. Look at that. It's so pretty. <laughs> and I can knock back this white with just, just a little bit of, see that? Just knocking back the white. It, I'm So I'm basically making designer paper. I think this is my favorite one. I think it is. Oh, and I did this side too um, to show you uh, just some of the examples. And I, then I did some stamping over the top. Now you can do this in layers and do stencil and then take your stuff off and do another stencil and do a stamp. Or you can, you know, just however and whatever order you want to do it, I recommend and as an artist, I love trying new things. So what I, what I do and the way I learned to do, you know, unusual things like this is just 
playing with my supplies. Marianne, do you play with your supplies? Um, Is she I'm with us? I to play with yeah. them a lot more. I, a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Play yeah. Play is make yeah. this making time to be able to do it. You know? Yeah. We've been busy with videos and stuff lately. So I've been trying to spend more time in my art room just experimenting with the different glues and the different uh, mediums. And I've done that all my life anyway. And that's just how my brain wants to come up with new stuff. So, and check this out. I used a key. Look at these, these keys right here from around. I, and this, you can walk around your house, walk around your house and find some shapes that you like. Um, it could be a bowl that's oval shaped or heart shaped. It could be a, you know, any any fun shape you want and look what we end up with. This is a piece I can embellish with. I mean, it could go on a page side or in a cluster or, you know, on a tab. Uh, it's just really cool. I might even be able to cut that in half and put it on one side on half of the back of the back of the book. And then the other side on the front um, and, you know, cut it. So it, or make it snap. Um, so that's why I like using paper for this. You could always use, um, uh, plastic pieces like this. Um, but I, then I wouldn't have that extra piece to work with and play with. So I really like doing it this way with just a paper mask. So I also, I traced around this. I mean, that's just a paint palette, um, to trace around, uh, the sanding disc. You know, if you just walk around and find shapes that you like, you'll end up with some fun stuff to trace around, cut out, use as a mask. Um, I do have this masking stuff and this is uh, from art school uh, and it's uh, uh, a frisk, um, liquid frisk. And it's like a gummy latex and you roll it off when you're done. That's a little bit different and it's harder to work with. I mean, there's, there's other ways to achieve this without making such a mess and having to use a paintbrush. So um, I'm going to take these away. Let's see. I even used a bottle. This bottle right here is old. I, it was probably an Avon perfume or something. Uh, I have a collection of old bottles to use in, in my art room. And this was a fun thing to, to trace around also. So it doesn't have to be a symmetrical item, you know. So I'm going to show you some examples here. We'll whip through them pretty quick. There's that bottle that I was telling you about. Um, and I want you guys to know I'm not seeing the comments. I The last thing I see is Clever from Sylvia. Uh, so I don't know if I'm seeing those just so you know. Marianne, can you see the comments? Yes, and they're all busy okay. watching exactly what you're doing, and that is the last one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. I will watch the comments so that we keep okay. up. Okay. So if there's any questions for you, I will let you know. Okay. All right. So uh, this is a couple more. I think this is my very, very, very favorite one, and this was one of the ones I, I had when I was just playing with it. This is a tin that's on my desk that I traced around. That's it. I mean, if you have a Cricut, you could you could probably make these shapes, but uh, you know, I just got one and it's still in the box. So <laughs> I, just, I just made the shapes. So this one is uh, when we I laid down and uh, rubbed uh, uh, ink over that uh, tablecloth of mine that's, that's bumpy. That's what I did there and I put a mask on. So you could do it either way stencil on the bottom or stencil on the top that is very cool right there that is stamps too so i'm just going through these real quick um we're going to talk about the ugly face and they're not always going to come out perfect too i mean these are just pages from the uh journal that i just showed you and um clearly that one's not done it needs another layer but this is what it's going to look like with one layer so this is why you want more than one layer so it looks like designer paper when you're finished you could use this in card making. It would be way cool for that too, for backgrounds. <laughs> this looks like noodles to me. Looks like that's that lace tablecloth that I uh, rubbed the ink over. Um, there's that one. So there's just a lot of samples here. So we'll get right through those. That's what it looks like with one color. This one could still use some more. I just wanted to show you the different stages that you could be at, you know, and, and getting through that ugly phase. Like this looks terrible right here, but you know what? After I throw another stencil on top of that and a mask, cause I can put my mask on at this point and go to town on that, you know, and it would still, you know, if your stencil has enough space, like this one doesn't, it's, um, 
Mm -hmm. They're too far apart. You want something that's closer together to get that image. Um, if you end up, if that's the only stencil you have, there's a way around that where you just take your brush or your thing and go around the edges with like your vintage photo to get that crisp edge that we're looking for. But you can have stencil in that, in that frame too, or stamp. I mean, either way. So I've got a lot of these here. Stamp, stamp. Okay. This one I was waiting to un unveil here for you. And this is just washi tape. Hey, but... Sharon. Yep. They're having a little difficulty seeing. Can you, do you want to try to lower your camera just a little bit? See if sure. you can do a little no problem. Closer. How's that? That is a little closer. Kathy, how is that? Is that, is that good? Let's try it for a minute and see. That's the other reason we can do a live. So you guys can, uh, can tell us what's, you know, if you guys can see, if you can hear, <laughs> that's it's always good. Closer, so so closer. Should yeah. I? No, it's, that's definitely closer, but let's see if it's close enough. Well, you keep going and, and I'll wait. For I cut it down a little bit more. So we'll see. Okay. I can also pull my camera forward. There. How's that? You got, are you there? Yeah. Um, we're, Hello? You, just, you keep going. We need um, a minute to see how it is. If it's close. Okay. That's better. Okay. Uh, we want you ladies to know we rewatched last weekend and the delay. We only see the delay while we're doing it. I thought my camera was fuzzy and I thought there was this 15 to 20 second delay, but it's only while we're doing it that we, when we look up the screen. So we have to try not to look at the screen because it's very yeah. distracting. <laughs> it, it turns out being right on time otherwise. So, and see, I took those off and I ended up with these fun little places to write. So if you're doing a naked journal, let's say, and you want to do something with the other side of your coffee dyed paper or look how beautiful that is. And let's take this off. See, look at that. And that's just a book page from a from an old art book. Pretty cool. Can you see better now, Kathy? Yeah, okay. I can see better now. Um, so this is like the ugly stage. Not all of us have, you know, like uh, uh, everything we touch turns to gold. And we do get ugly stages. Don't you, Marianne? Like well, between before yeah. it's done. If it's, if it's, yeah, ugly, that's, I have to keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And sure. a lot of artists have an ugly stage on their paintings and that's why they don't like anyone to see it until it's finished. Yes. That's pretty normal. Actually. Like I don't, I don't even let my husband see what I'm doing until it's done because I'm like, it's not finished yet. It's not beautiful yet. You know, <laughs> but this is uh, stage one. This is what it might look like. Um, so let me just get through those. This is what happened when um, the stencil was too far apart. I just wanted to share that with you. You can't see the edge. I left it like this so you could see the difference. Like you can't see what shape I had in there. You just see bits of white. So that's why you want to save this sort of stencil for after and do something where the, the images are closer together to get that crisp line for your first layer. So that. And I'm going to have to pull all these aside. That was the example. Okay. So let's talk about shapes. Let's get right to it here. You can do any shape you want. Like I said, you could go around your house. You can look for stuff. I even had some C's. It was my initial. I thought, you know, that why not? If I'm doing it in my journal, why wouldn't I have a C to write in? Because this creates a writing space. I mean, they could write on the whole thing. I could write on the whole thing. But how how nice is it to create little little areas for them to write their favorite quotes or, you know, where they know to stick a picture of their kids maybe, or, you know, that's the bottle. This thing right here. I'm sure that all of you have had one of these at one time or another. Um, these are perfect shapes to use as a stencil and uh, all you would do is trace it out and then cut it out. That's it. Do you have some of these Marianne? I do, and I'm just typing in here. That's a fantastic tip. <laughs> Thanks. You get chipboard pieces, and chipboard always comes in. Right. You know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Or, and it's like this paint chips. But you're not really going to take that skeleton and use it like we do skeletons, but it's a great no. pencil. 
it's a great stencil because they're like they're chipboard they're thick yeah. and it's something you can use over and over again so i always keep them so your paint chips somebody was asking what to do with paint chips this is a great way to use these paint chips whether you leave it the same shape or you make a fun shape out of it this is this is a good use for these um like that's going to make a nice journal card after i stencil over the top maybe i'll do that one um let's see you can use packaging uh, you know, if you, especially if you're going to glue down the back, uh, if you want to make a card out of it, you could cover the back with some book page, but you can definitely make this beautiful. This is, um, or use it as a mask, one or the other, um, and make that beautiful. So I've got all these little shapes here that I've kind of traced around to give you some samples. There's keys, there's, you know, I just kind of make a bunch of them. And then I have the two pieces to work with. Oh, and, um, envelope or, uh, folders. That's a great use for these. Um, they're cardstock. You can reuse it. And the ones I like the most are the ones I've used on a couple papers. So because they have more layers, uh, there's more packaging. And lastly, we can use tape. This is masking tape. Now, I would test it on a corner of your paper to make sure it doesn't ruin your paper and that it will peel up like this one. Paper is a little bit delicate and it's having a more, more difficult time peeling up. So test a corner. And use your low-tech tape. Uh, you, you know that washi tape that doesn't stick very well? That's perfect for this. And you can do like, I've got stripes on here. You can do that and then peel it off. And then you have these white stripes, you know, to work Karen, with. So, uh-huh. Would you just do um, a quick explanation to them together as to the difference between a stencil and a mask? So they can kind of yes. put them in person. I'm Yeah, I will do that right now. Okay. So I've got here, these are masks. It's funny because I was just there. <laughs> you can, first right of all, on. you can make your own stencils. Are you there? Yep. Okay. You can make your own stencils. Like I have this punch. I got it at a craft sale in a box. Um, and you can, I mean, all of these could be like a place to put a quote that you're, you know, if say you have a page, you'd like to keep track of those just, just as an example or, uh, something fun that happened today or, you know, why you would, wherever you would use a little space. Um, so you can actually make stencils out of this stuff. And then you have the other pieces to work with still too, because this is a file folder that was written on, um, so make yourself some some fun things like this anyway and play with those punches and see what you can come up with. You might end up making something that you like more than your favorite stencil. You never know. <clears throat> Isn't that true? Very I always feel like the things I make all the way by myself, by hand, are my favorite things anyway. So what was that, Marianne? I said very true, and I'm sorry I had to step away because I choked Mary on the <laughs> Oh, are you okay? No choking. Are you so excited you're choking? Did yeah. that happen? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I hope you're okay now. Yeah. Um, these are from uh, stamps, from when you get stamps and they're, they're the pieces that are on top. Um, this is a great uh, medium to, or a great uh, substrate, let's call it, to uh, uh, cut your stamps out of. Um, Whatever you use to, I guess it would be more like a uh, words. Words are hard. <laughs> like, oh, material. Um, so if you want to use these, use a utility knife with it to be real precise. And please be careful. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> please don't hurt yourself. <laughs> so if you don't have stencils, there are ways around it is, is my point. Um, this, does everybody have some of this? I bet you do. Um, I didn't even know what it was. Uh, got it a couple years ago. Uh, it, just because I thought it was interesting. It was at a thrift store and I got a great big thing, like like 12 feet of it. And uh, I didn't realize this is from, uh, from sequins. When they make sequins, they end up with these strips. And I don't know where they sell these things, but I happen to have two and they're different sizes even. One's red and one's gold. Um, if you don't have some of this, keep your eye out for some of this. I originally thought it was Christmas garland. So I was pretty excited when I realized I had 12 feet of stencil. <laughs> Anybody ever I'm buy put this over here. What's that? Anybody ever buy avocados? Oh, I love avocados. What about them? 
Do they sometimes come in a bag like this? Oh, yeah, I have bags saved like that. Yep, and you use them as stencils, don't you? I have never used it as a stencil. I do like it in uh, underneath a mixed media project, mm -hmm. like something that I'm doing that's very 3D, yeah. like a piece of artwork. Either stencils or as, as layering, like you just said. Yeah, yeah, they're a great layer. I've never tried using them as stencils. Maybe I shall. Um, these are some stencils that I already had, and these are big enough to be a writing space on their own. So um, you could certainly you know, trace out that shape on a piece of paper, cut it out, lay it down. Um, so you're kind of using these in reverse, basically. That's the difference. A mask goes over um, whatever you're working on. Let's say you're going to do a house. You have a house drawn out. You would, and that's how I learned with the gum, with a house. Uh, you would cut out another shape that is exactly the same size as the house and lay it over the top so you don't get any of the next layer on top of the house. And then when you take it away, your house is white. So uh, that's that's the difference between a mask and a stencil. Um, it masks the, it masks the uh, uh, surface that you're trying to achieve. Um, this is, I made a stencil out of a edge punch. That's what that is. All I did was punch out a couple strips and then I laid them down and, uh, just uh, put ink over the top of it. And they work perfect on vellum too. Uh, anything that's a little more delicate like this, it's got like a lot of detail and little holes. Um, punch it in vellum. You'll have a nice stencil when you're done and it's totally reusable. Boy, I'm just full of tips today. My goodness. <laughs> These are packaging. See this yellow? It's packaging. All I did was cut out some shapes. I was kind of going for like a weird bug here like a moth or something. And I did not achieve it, by the way. I think it looks horrible. <laughs> um, but I just wanted to show you that you could use packaging. Um, now, I don't know if I'd put it in, in a journal after you punch it, after you uh, stencil this all up, because I don't know, it's bubble wrap, but it's up to you. You could totally do that. It could be thick, uh, a thick layer. Um, but you can use all that packaging you get in the mail. I'm not hearing anything. Are you still there, Marianne? Yep, I am. I'm just listening. I'm showing. No, you're fine. I'm showing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing a few things here and there that can be used. Like this had a when it was purchased had two bottles of something from Costco. Oh, there's pretty cool stencil. Uh huh. And some of yeah, you that would be good. The bottom of your your drawers or your cabinets or your husband's tool box. It's kind of grippy stuff, but it's got all kinds of little squares in it. Oh yeah, I've got a bunch of that. Yep. And here's another one. This is a roll of, of styrofoam. Just with a pair of scissors, cut the roll of styrofoam into little onion rings. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I like that. You can stamp with those, too. Yep. You, yeah. you can make your own stamps with styrofoam like that. Absolutely. And you can set them all around and, and you can ink in them or spray in them and stencil whatever you want. Uh, somebody said the acetate sheet that your new stamp is stuck to. That uh, that was me. The, oh, okay. Okay. The, the, All the, right. Oh, I guess I see it to you. Straight, you know, I think <laughs> is the name of it. it was, that's the, the sheet of that your stamp is stuck to it. Here's another idea. Your pinking shears or those funny scissors you got the edge edge scissors, you can cut out, let's say you want to put a word at the top of your page, you can cut out a shape like this and use that as a mask, uh, lightly tape it down. And I, you don't have to tape them down. I just say that because they want to move while you're, you know, and then I'm relining up my stencil. And sometimes you have to do that anyway, because it's your stencil is not as big as your paper. But you know, that's, that's a great way to do that too. You could make a big square like this or a rectangle um, and use the other side of the scissor, or, you know, you could cut out a different shape, certainly with those scissors. And if you're doing, if you use enough ink, you get to see those nice crisp edges too. So I'm going to put that off to the side. Um, here's a bag that I had just started. So anyway, I think we understand now what a mask is. I do have all these nice little samples here. There's one with a fun scissor edge. 
Um, there's some round ones here. That's the same shape as a paint. No, I think I did that from a box. Um, I do a lot of bowls and boxes and because I, I have a lot of antique stuff and I just have cool, I have some cool shapes, you know, that I really like. Um, more hearts. There's a star that came uh, from a pack from the Dollar Tree. I think they still have these around, but I've had this forever. Um, this is my ink pad. This is my rainbow. I'm going to get it out here. My rainbow ink pad right there. You mm. see that? And I did it with the handle and all. You can use anything, ladies, that you want to. And that's going to be the size and shape of the part that is less decorative. So they can write there. Um, this was a, it's like a wood thing. Did I send you one of these, Marianne? It's a wood thing with, with uh, the wood is carved or cut and it's uh, like zigzaggy at the bottom. Nope. I might have just given something away. <laughs> <laughs> but this is kind of paintbrush shaped and I thought that was fun. You could do a hand mirror shape. How cute would that be in a, in a pair, in your Paris journal? That'd be super cute. Yeah. Do you have a fancy hand mirror? Because I'm sure that they have other little shapes around the edges if you oh, if yeah. you if you do, because I do. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're going to put those away. I think we'll use the paint chips so I can show you and maybe that heart that's not finished yet. So, I think these ones are done. What do you guys think? You guys think these are done? Yeah. I think they're, they're beautiful. They are. Yeah. Yeah. This is I, what yeah, I don't think I'm going to stamp on those anymore. <laughs> What's that? This is what bullets came in. Oh, yeah. Those work. Ooh. Totally. This is a cheese cutter. Oh, yeah. It is? How is yeah. that a cheese cutter? <clears throat> Let me see that. It's Tupperware. And you cut it like this and you stab it like that. Huh. Interesting. <clears throat> I've never seen a cheese cutter like that. Really? Throw this away. Yeah, I'm looking through my little box. Are you? <laughs> and it has different so, size piece in it that you can add through. Oh, yeah. If you look through your drawers, ladies, your cabinets and drawers in your kitchen or your tools, um, any sort of tool might have a cool shape. I did a dresser or a desk one time for a friend who got his first computer and he built cars for a living. And I used primer on the desk, like a gray primer. And then I laid Hey, I laid tools over the desk on each side here and there just randomly in like clusters. Like he came in and threw his tools down. And uh, then I dusted it with a, a darker spray paint. I think I used black. Um, and I put uh, vintage cars from a vintage uh, Life magazine. Uh, I put that on there and used um, um, wrenches and stuff for the drawer pulls. But it looked like there were tools all over his desk. It was so cool that um, is a great idea Sharon that sounds it really was cool. so neat I love finding new ways to use spray paint and to use um use unexpected items I guess that's the artist in me that wants to go oh I really like this shape what can I do with that you know that's just how I roll this okay so <laughs> what's that this came out of a drain what it oh I love it it's Amen. perfect. Anything that has shape, I keep. <laughs> it's Me too. I have drawers full of whoozy what's it's, and then I have a bin that's just for um, the shapes, like uh, things I want to do this with, basically, mm -hmm. um, whether it be on furniture or on paper, either way. Um, and we're going to talk about mud for a minute before I get started, because I wanted to show you, you can also, like, I think this is too bright for my style, this piece of paper. If I treat this like I've treated the pages you saw, I can tone this color down. I can, and doing it on one that has four like this, I can see, okay, what happens if I use this on here with this color on here? And what happens if I use that color on, on the green square? So this is a great way to um, uh, experiment on paper like this. It's multicolored. So you can see what you like and what you don't like. You should uh, try to play with your tools and see them in a new way and see if you can find new ways to use them. That's just really fun. Um, on to the mud. Do you ladies know how you get mud? Um, it's uh, Every color will make brown if you mix it together, if you mix enough. But if you do 
the same colors opposite each other on the color wheel, you will always get mud. They will always make an olive green or brown or that's just what they do. Um, and if we don't let our layers dry in between, we end up with mud. Um, like that olive greeny gray, way too dark. If you want something vibrant and you want the colors to be sharp, um, let your layers dry, whether it's paint or I, I don't know how many inks do that, but because they usually dry right away. But that's how you avoid the mud, just letting them, you know, even if you hit it with a hair dryer, let them dry in between and then go back at it. So, why, well, Amy? Did I explain that correctly? Yes. Oh, okay. Amy Good. says you've rolled that way our whole lives. What's that? <laughs> Amy said you've rolled that way our whole lives. <laughs> I, I've rolled that way. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've always uh, done always uh, creative things. My brain just doesn't let me. Um, I, I, I must have a science bone because I'm like, what happens if, you know, I, it's all experimenting. Yeah. And that's how I discover what I like. I, I think that's how you find your style. That's how you discover your, your favorite things to use. It's just, uh, it's, it's like when you were a kid and you got to play and there's a part of your brain that gets triggered when you're, pl when you're doing that, that feels like that playing that you did as a child. So, okay. I need to get onto the project because well, time is a ticket and you've got one too. All right. So I hope that that wasn't boring or overwhelming one or the other. Um, let's see. These ones are done, but I'm going to use these ones first, I think. So I could use a page like this um, and those words will get pushed back to the back. Just so you know, you can use any kind of paper, but I think we're going to use a piece of coffee dyed paper today. Um, I do have um, substrate here. You can use substrate with this. Uh, another piece of substrate. And there's another piece of more colorful, almost collage substrate. Um, that's got uh, some homemade uh, gel prints on it. So you could use those. That would be fine. So if you're making a journal, though, this could be used for any element in a journal. It doesn't have to be the journal itself. It could just be a, could be a, 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 a card or a postcard or something. Oh, I'm losing my paper here. All right. So first of all, I've got, this is coffee dyed on this side, but it was one of those ones that I picked up the extra with and it just doesn't really have anything interesting going on. I'm going to leave that the way it is on that side though. And I'm going to fold this in half because we know that if I make a journal, it's probably going to be about this size. So I try to keep everything like this size. I could do big ones and cut them up. But if I do this ahead of time, then maybe this becomes a, a page in my, in my journal where it gets sewn in. All right, how's everybody doing out there? We're ready to play with stencils. All right, let's play so with some somebody, stencils. If somebody doesn't have a stencil with them right now, what you can you suggest cut out now to participate. Go ahead. Tell them how, Marianne. I was just going to say, what do you suggest they do to participate? Oh, in oh, um, if you do not have a stencil now. Take a piece of paper, any old piece of paper. I'm going to pull this one out. It's my extra one that I stamp on. Take a piece of paper and fold it the size you think you're going to want. So we want it, we want it page sized. I'm going to use this. I'm going to tear. All right. This over here. Yeah, it's in my way. And then I'm going to have you fold it in half again, either this way or the other way. Just do that and take your scissors and uh, maybe I'll use uh, some pinking shears around the edges here and decide what your stencil shape is going to be. Now the pinking shears, this stencil won't last long because it'll, it's going to be um, after you start rubbing ink on it, those will, those will come up. So it's going to be a one-time use sort of thing. And then we're going to take our regular scissors if I can find them. Do you guys notice my desk is bigger? I rearranged my room and I've actually got my little shelf on the back uh, on my on the edge of my sewing table now because they're right next to each other. <laughs> I had to make more space after last weekend. 
Um, okay, and then you're going to just cut out some shapes, whatever you want, whatever, whatever. Sharon, while you're doing that and what you said about the pinking shears made me think that it would be really easy to take a cereal box or a cracker mm -hmm. box or one of those things and take that piece of chipboard, cut out one whole side and uh -huh. cut out some shapes out of that because that would last a lot longer. Yes. Yeah, it would. <laughs> or a piece of the, the vellum or a piece mm -hmm. of a uh, folder like this. Uh huh. Um, and use your punches, old, or old, if you older. have uh, what's that? Uh, an old Manila folder. Is that what you had? Oh yeah, that's what that was. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> or the plastic from uh stamps or uh whatever you know kind of packaging um plastic the the clear stuff that looks like uh shrinky dinks that you're supposed to be able to make shrinky dinks out of. And we're going to do that one day because <laughs> I've always wanted to try it. <laughs> um, yeah. So you have a lot of options here uh, uh, as far as what you can make. But anyway, that's what you're going to kind of, you know, just cut it, cut it. Remember making snowflakes when you were a kid, you could also fold it in quarters and do it. So you can make your own stencil here. Just make sure you don't have too many edges like this, or you're going to only get to use it once. Um, but I know they make like a glue stick that is a peel. You like you can stick down and, and peel it back again. Um, and I'm, I'm not, I don't have any myself, but that uh, really icky Dollar Tree uh, glue stick might, might do that if you experiment with that and you have any. Um, so you could actually stick your stencil down until you're ready for the reveal. Um, you could certainly do that. And then it doesn't matter if you have too many of those. It's just whatever you're going to, when you're going to ink, you're going to end up pulling up edges if you're not real careful. So, okay. So that's what we do with that stencil. Oh, sorry. Sharon. What's that? Some of the ladies have some of that because I sold at my last live sale on YouTube. Um, I sold uh -huh. some, like roller tape tape rollers, but it's that reuse, you know, stick up really like like making a post-it note. Yep. Uh -huh. to those. And some of these ladies got some of them. So interesting. Really easy. I didn't even know they had them on tape rollers. That's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> really? Mm -hmm. So, okay. I'm going to knock the back, the white out. I already know I'm doing it when I get to the end, but I will wait to do that until the end. So it's like inking something, inking the edges. You know, it's not done until that happens, <laughs> but you do it last mostly. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to pick a color here. Um, I think I'm going to go with some, uh, some blues this time. Watch me now. So we're, I'm going to do blue or maybe I'll do this blue. Um, distress oxide is a real soft, nice effect for this. Maybe I'll do green. I have distress. I have green. Look at that. All right, and I've barely got to use this, so I'm um, going to oh. pick raspberry bright. Ooh, I want raspberry. That sounds wonderful. Ooh. I actually stole this from my makeup. This brush it works really good with stencils, and I'm I was intending to go steal another one from my makeup that I didn't use before we started today, and I. I just had other things going on. <laughs> we were testing our equipment. So get a good, good, nice amount on there and go ahead and, you know, give yourself some color. Um, I'm just putting a really, really light layer on before I get that mask on. Just to give it some interest inside of uh, the space that we're going to leave. So see how light that is. Here, what I'm what I'm doing is taking coffee dyed paper and making it uh, decorating it um, to be a one of a kind piece uh, that they can write on. So mm, cool. it creates journaling space or interest, you know. Look at that. And then line up your stencil if it's not as big as your page. No biggie. And do that. And it doesn't have to be, I like it when it's like faded over here and it might get darker and then this area is darker. Um, I don't, I don't ever, ever, ever do it all in the same, um, uh, the same evenness all over. Um, I like that. And I think it looks, it just looks um, more stylish uh, as far as design goes. That would be that vintagey sort of 
thing that I like or steampunk or whatever. Um, so I'm going to keep this to my side here. And now I'm going to pick one of these shapes here. And I think I'm going to do that. And maybe I'll do a heart on top of it this time too. So um, we're going to use a little bit of washi tape. Just a teeny tiny bit is all you need. Um, just because washi tape uh, is a lower tack tape. I've got one that barely sticks to anything. I love it, but I always have to glue it down. Um, that would work too. So just a tiny piece just to stick it down so that it doesn't move on you. <clears throat> I almost want a third heart that's not straight. There we go. Tiny piece. Are you doing this too, Marianne? I am. Can you see? Oh, yeah. Well, we've got a t like a 20 second delay. So oh, that's right. I, <laughs> I can't really see. But, yeah. yes, <laughs> so I can I do any shape I wanted here. I could make another heart. I could do one of those. I think I'm going to cut out another heart really quick. I've got this extra mm -hmm. paper here. <clears throat> Just another. Ta -da. I think I need to cut out a heart, too. Are you going to do a heart? Yeah. yeah. I like hearts. They're just my go-to. Yep, me Look too. Look at that. All right. I'm going to have a hard time seeing that one through the stencil because it's so, it matches. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to put that down. And then I'm going to decide, since I have that as an underlayer, now I want to make sure that my stencil is, um, the holes are close to, enough together to get, the, the edges crisp but if I don't have one that's close together I can always do this I'm, I'm not really doing it I can always do this with my uh like some vintage photo around the edges but really softly and try to get that um straight edge but I'm I'm not doing that right now so let's see I want I have well used stencils I haven't bought a new stencil in a long long time these are uh I've used these on furniture. <laughs> I've, I've actually have some bigger ones downstairs, like some Paris ones downstairs that are for furniture and they're huge. Mm. Um, this is my favorite one, but it doesn't give a crisp line. Um, I think I'm going to go with this one. It's not very hearty, but uh, I love layering things and you don't know until you try ladies. So um, figure out what goes together and, you know, and, and what you like. Like I said, this is how you find your style. Now, Sharon, I'm going to, yes. When you put the washi tape on to hold it in place, did you fold that and put it underneath it? So it wouldn't cover the edges or did you, I go did. I rolled it. I rolled oh. it Yep. and uh, put it in the middle or you can put it under whatever edge might come up when you're, when you're doing your ink. All right. So we did the green and we know we're going to go back to that. But let me find a complementary color here. How about, well, I need kind of a, a dusty color, don't I? How about this blue? I'm going to flip this over because I like this side. And this might be an element that gets tucked into a pocket. So, and this is jelly, jelly plate paper. That's that mud I was telling you about. The colors didn't go together and I just didn't like it. And it turned into something I I was using to do this with. Okay, so I'm going off the edge here for a reason. It's really a style choice. Uh, how if you're an even person and like to line things up, I get that. Uh, I'm not an even person. I, I never line things up and I always do things in odd numbers as well. <laughs> so now you're going to decide um, your color and I've got blue here. And I've got this with blue on it. I just changed. I'm just going to get a little on there. And really lightly at first, because you don't know how dark it's going to come out. You want to just barely touch it. Yeah, see that? That's dark. And I'm going to get in all those little crevices. But I'm going to make sure that I'm concentrating with more ink around each of these shapes, like on the edges so that I get that crisp line and then fade out. Um, just if you want to do it real solid over the whole thing, that's fine too. But if you're going to do it lightly, make sure you get around those edges the best. 
This is how you turn printer paper into designer paper. Honestly, this is this is my favorite way to do it. I didn't line that up very good, did I? There we go. And this is what makes your artwork unique or your journal that you're making or, you know, and if, if your stencil moves just a hair, you can line it back up at this point. Just make sure you hold on to it until you get a good coat, at least, at least a couple of the holes in your stencil so you know where to line it up at. So don't let go of it until you get, until you see some color. That. And I end up using these masks over and over again until I think they're done. <laughs> They'll have nine layers on them. And I'm like, oh, I like it like that now. <clears throat> there we go. Look at that. Even better at the big reveal. So you could use multiple colors of ink here. Really all about, this is all about your style and what you like. I'm going to go this way and I'm going to make my points touch here and try to hold it still. You know, I'm working on wax paper today and I probably should take it away because it's making my stuff slip around. I only did it because I didn't want ink all over or paint or whatever I ended up dragging out. You could do this with paint. You could use a sponge, uh, like a makeup sponge and do this with paint, no problem. Like your, your second layer. Well, you could do your first layer too. Um, but your first layer should be um, lighter if you're going to go underneath. Let's see. I love this part of stenciling. Like, oh, it's so good. I love how crisp it is. Okay, so now <clears throat> I'm going to line a couple points up here. You know what? I'm taking this away. Taking it away. That's it. All right. That should be better. It's really moving around. Um, yeah, I'm not going to line the points up. I'm just going to go here. Just found a spot. It's really weird having everybody do the art with us and nobody's chatting. We're not used to that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Y'all are there, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a little strange. I like doing it along with you. It's just a little strange not to have the chat going. It says the chat's disconnected, Marianne. Please wait that... while we try to reconnect you. Yeah, it says it's disconnected. Oh, no. What do we need to do? Um, okay, if anybody can hear us, can you hear us? If anybody can chat, type, type in there whether you are. I don't know. I didn't know that it was gone. Let's see. I don't. I don't see chat disconnected. Bernice says hi. Okay, so Bernice, you can hear us. And hi, it's... Bernice. Okay. Did you type that? All share? right. Says disconnected. I did. Okay. I did. It's not. I didn't know if they were. Uh, if the if the video disconnected momentarily, I was you know letting them know that we were having some hi, sort of Mary technical Ellen. issue. Hi, Mary Ellen. Um, Kathy can hear fine. Mary Ellen can hear fine. Sylvia is telling Ivy to take notes, please. Um, <laughs> I, I can tell you Ivy's not taking notes because Ivy's busy making art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Sylvia okay. Can okay, cool. All right. So maybe it was just yours. That's weird. So I'm going to drag out a stamp now. Oh, no. Okay, I've got it. Um, My, my tape... Uh, Went a skew there. Um, I'm going to drag out a stamp that I think goes with it. And I already did that writing earlier. Let's see. Um, I've got the clock and I've got the one you sent me. Um, I've got fairies I haven't used yet. That doesn't really go with it, though. Um, You're looking at like a stamp that kind of goes with your stencil that you just did? Yeah. Okay. And you kind of kind of more of a pattern you wouldn't want to use words unless you're just uh, well i i will do this i will do a little bit of that little text but you you kind of want to you know something that you're not going to miss a whole picture when you take that away if you put like a quote on it you're only going to see part of the quote when you remove these hearts that's so true. you want something that's fine if it's separated i know which one right here 
Um, and I'm stamping over it this time, but you can take off your things and stamp under it at this point. Um, that's fine too. I just uh, am showing you how to do multiple, multiple layers because um, that's fun. Let's see. No, no, maybe. Oh, let's. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm looking for something. I don't know what. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm crafting along with you too. <laughs> I'm using words, but they're not really words. It's like a whole, like a, it's like, yeah, a like a text. Like that. Yeah. Like a, a bunch of text. <gasps> that my camera fell. Oh my goodness. Did you get hung up? Sorry guys. Earbuds. N yes. Uh, I, I caught them. Wow. And now I've ink all yeah. over my hands. Thanks. For Are you there you. ladies? Yeah. Sylvia's got to go. Sorry. Her dear hubby works at, she gets up at three in the morning. Sylvia? Oh, yeah. oh okay. You yeah. have a wonderful night. Thanks for joining us. And you'll have to watch it to catch the, the second um, item that we're doing on the second half. And that's the one out of your 12 by 12 paper. The what? <clears throat> that's the one out of their 12 by 12 paper. What is? The, our second item that we're doing. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what you're doing. Um, so don't tell me. Let it be a surprise. I like that. I like Look surprises. How cool that looks. What's that? Look how cool that looks. When I pull up the heart, it's going to be really neat. Oh, wow. Yeah, I like to do a little peek underneath because I'm like, oh, I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to get, I got these other stamps here. I have music I'm going to use um, on this. So let me find a block right there. I'm just going to use this. Being resourceful. I don't have a long block. This is the largest one I have. Um, so I use this lid, which is cracked, and I'm not going to have it much longer. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to use, let's see. Uh, I already did green and blue, so I'm just going to do black for this one. I've got stuff all over the place. Making oh, it crazy. I understand, Bernice. I don't remember where you are, but I think you're back east, aren't you? What's that? Oh, is it late? It's bad oh, time. Thank you for checking in with us, oh, Bernice, yeah. and, and hanging out while you could. At least for a while. Yes. Bernice, we'll get some earlier. Yeah, we'll be posted so you can watch the whole thing. You can speed it up then for when we're talking and slow it down for when we're crafting. Ontario. Okay. Yeah, I totally get it. Um, and we all try to get some at different times of the day for you, too, because we want everybody Absolutely. to be able to be here. We're going to try to do an early well, earlier one during the week for everyone also. Surprise blown. <laughs> What's that? Surprise. Well, That's we've been asking it. them what works for them. We just yeah. haven't figured and out how, how yet. Yeah. For a, Bye, yeah. Bernice. Okay. Thank you so much. Sleep good. Good evening. Or great sleep. Okay. Sleep. So I'm just lightly hitting this. I don't care if I get the whole image. Um, what I want is I'm just adding extra, extra interest. So, and I, Marianne is the music. Uh, she reads music. Um, she's the music major. I, I can read it only if I stand there and go, every good boy does fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no joke, Marianne, no joke. And that's but, uh, <laughs> what's that? And that's for a guitar. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, uh, I, she's probably going to tell me that's upside down, but I don't care. Yeah. You know as what? As long as I'm going yeah. out on a limb and I'm putting text upside down. Oh, okay. I know. So that's the point. We're just wild creating side. basically, you know, we're designing some paper here. The wild side. This would be so great on a card. Yeah. For a background. Yep. <clears throat> I want that to stick out a little bit more. There we go. Okay. Now, I feel good about that. That's a lot. I did all three layers um, on top of my masks. And I'm going to give it a little peek -see and see if I need to go around it. I am going to go around it just a little bit because we did that under layer. So I'm going to take just a tiny bit of Distress Oxide or Distress Ink and Vintage like Photo. Of my first color. Oh, my first color is underneath the hearts. Oh. Well, wow. um, I don't, I don't usually put one underneath, but I did it this time to show you, you can do it differently each time. Um, it's just really about layering that on there and right. having, 
uh, having the mask in so you can create that shape mm -hmm. and create a space to work. Mm -hmm. but this I did so lightly that they could write there too. Now you see what I'm doing, ladies and gentlemen, if we have any gentlemen with us today, mm -hmm. I'm going around my shape to get a crisper line and it's not changing a whole lot, but what it's doing is, is creating that, this, da, 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 da. look at that. Oh, how fun is that? And this got pretty too. One more layer on that thing, <laughs> on that heart, yeah. <laughs> on this ugly jelly print mud heart. Um, well, but now it even looks better. I think these masks should definitely be used. Oh well, yeah. That's why I was saying. Keep doing layers, it, it's, layers on them. Better to use the paper so that you can have, you know, uh, have yes. that piece because it's an extra piece to use and they turn out so beautiful. Um, and you can add more to them. And I've used them uh, on multiple things in the same color family and ended up with a really cool ultra layered uh, shape, you know, like with six layers on it because I used it several times. Okay. I, big reveal. This is my favorite part. <gasps> Look at that. I wish you guys could show us yours. They can if they, <laughs> if they finish it, take a picture and put it up on the happy paper. Yeah. Facebook yeah. Group. We'll be able to see. Look everything. at that. It's so pretty. I really like it. I'll post mine. Even I love it when this happens and I like it this much. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. It's so beautiful. Okay. Um, I love the design, the way they're layered like that. That's cool. The, my Oh, my paper. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is really cool. I love the way your Look, heart, your your, stack, your hearts are stacked on top of each other instead of random. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Ready well, for me? It's pretty rare for me to do something in line like that. <laughs> so once in a while, I like to throw my brain off a little bit and do that. Yeah. <laughs> what What did you say? You ready for mine? Okay, I'm ready. Remember, I have a 25 second delay. Yep. So it'll take just a moment. I still see myself inking, guys. Really? <laughs> yeah. I'm still inking around the second heart on the picture or on my video, my feed. Oh, man. Um, what am I doing? That, am I uh, you are inking the bottom. Okay. With, and yeah, just about around that. your heart. Yeah. I would feather that out just a little bit more so you don't end up with a uh, fuzzy heart that you did in ink but f feather it out lightly. So it kind of goes, um, uh, do you understand what I'm saying when I say feather? Yep. Okay. I I, it's that. hard to explain, you know, words. The heart <laughs> to do that. <clears throat> yeah. I'm 20 seconds behind though, aren't I? Cause you're feather, you're uh, doing your third heart now. Oh, wow. You're more than 20 seconds behind. You're like yeah. a minute. Yeah. I've been holding this up here for almost a minute. Are you serious? Yeah. <gasps> wow. The camera for you to see. Yeah. Okay. When I said something about feathering, you still had your ink thing in your hand. So oh. yeah. Everybody else. Oh, it's amazing though. Are you guys uh, uh, caught up? You know, at this about the same point where you I'm going to start another one anyway and do some different shapes because I have the other side of this. Okay. So I have this side. With this I have my coffee dyed <laughs> side. And how's our time? Oh, am I out of time, Marianne? Oh, I yeah. am. Yeah, you can take five more minutes. It's all right. Okay. All right. Well, what I'm going to do now is just do a shape uh, like a square. We'll just do this square right here. This is a piece of construction paper. This is a really good use for that, by the way. Um, this is a paint chip that I taped a, a, a punch to, so it created another shape um, also. Um, so you could, I mean, you j just get real creative with these shapes. I mean, why not? Right. Okay. So a little bit of tape and I'm going to, I'm just going to do this really fast then and show you like the last, uh, way I would do it with the, using the stamp. I'm going to do this and then I'm going to find a stencil that's nice. And I'm going to use this that has a different sort of shape and get it real quick here. So that means this brush and this oxide. All right, real quick. So I took a lot of time on that one, but these can go real quick. Yeah. 
Well, it didn't take a lot of time to, um, to make it, you know, most of the time was in the explaining and, you know, the education. Yeah. We were talking about mud and (laughs) darn it. I lost my spot. What's that? We like playing in the mud. Yeah, we do. Okay. I'm losing my spot because I have other stencil on there. There we go. Okay. On the blue card. I was trying to line it up on the blue card and it already has something on it from the last time I used it. So I keep them in the bag until I feel like they have enough layers on them, honestly. Um, I just think that's that's what works for me. I just have a little plastic baggie. I also have a little plastic baggie because I've been planning this for a while. How long have I been talking about this, Marianne? About uh, doing masking? Since we started the Facebook group? Uh-huh. I've been wanting to do this for a while and we decided we were going to do it on a live, but then last weekend's live was kind of a craft till you drop, no plan, sort of just fun stuff. Just, just for a good time, you know? Yep. Okay. So I did that and I'm going to fill this space with, so I get that crisp edge. I'm going to use this stencil right here and darn it. I hate it when they have these little teeny tiny pieces like that, that flip up. That's what I get for hurrying that and I'm going to flip it over do that I'm just trying to do it fast so and this filling up all the space is what I'm doing here all right and then I'm going to do one more color I could do a shadow on this um if you pull your stencil to the side and up just a little bit and do a different color, you end up with a with a pretty deep shadow. But I have, because I went in and did these extra three spots, it would be too complicated. So what I'm going to do is this. This would be good. All right. So I have a birdhouse here. Where's my lid? And I have this. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and take this one off this time. And I'm going to go in with my birds and my bird cage and do some black. Ooh. Oh, got it everywhere. Oh, no, I got to fix it now. There can always be, you can always fix a mistake. Uh, if it's, if it's, completely unfixable you can fix it by throwing it into the trash but if otherwise you just keep adding color you just keep doing it take it outside go spray paint it you know uh (laughs) glue something to it there's always fixing a mistake you never have to worry about that sometimes burning it is fixing it you know (laughs) this is true Sometimes <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> yep. Sometimes it makes Oh, I have sense. a bird stamp I'm gonna add to this, I think. Um yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So see that that was so fast and so easy. If I did a shadow too, you can only imagine. Now I'm just gonna go in with a bird stamp, and I have that handy. I swear I do. Right here. And going to go back to that black I could use blue or green or red or whatever but I'm just doing it because it's here and I'm going to go ahead and cover that smudge see fixed it (laughs) (laughs) and a little bit more do a bird down here my upside down can't decide one there and we like to do everything in odd numbers So there, I think he was flying upside down. That's what it was. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, He's just, he's a kooky bird. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had one that was sitting, honestly. Eh, I'm going to quit there. I don't like the idea. I just tried to put the lid on my stamp. I don't like the idea that I have this bird here now because I like those other birds better, but uh, that's fine because I could put a sun there. I could, you know, there's always something you can do um, to fix it. Oh, I was talking about the mud earlier. Uh, Best way to fix mud, get out your white paint, go over it with a stencil, like knock it back so that that mud is just a, becomes just a color, an element in it in the background. 
that's that's how you fix that you don't paint over the whole thing you just you know paint over it with some white or some cream or some black and then that mm -hmm. becomes your shapes you know that mud mm -hmm. um so that is my tutorial today i hope that uh you all got to try this already if you haven't um go try it of course after marianne's done and uh, I'd love to see your pictures. I'd like to see, you know, which stencils and stamps and whatever you gravitate to. Um, a stamp can also be, I mean, that can also be just as easily found around your house as a stencil. So just start looking at the shapes of things and um, look at look at things through an artist's eye. That's that's my suggestion for today. <laughs> and Marianne, I, like I think we're over to you. Are you about ready? Yeah, uh, but I'm I'm putting um, on the backs. I did the back side of the paper when you started your second one. I flipped. Ooh, that's it over, pretty. Started doing the back side of my paper with a uh -huh. different stencil. I placed the hearts in different places and used a different stencil. I love it, and I like that you're using different colors. Uh, no, the same two colors. Oh, really? Yeah. Except on well, when I put the raspberry down first and then the peacock down second. And oh, the, it's making purple. That's why. Yeah. And the second one, I put yeah. the peacock down first and the raspberry second. But when they got overlapped, it does make purple. Yeah. yeah. Well, pink and pink and blue make purple. So. So now I am um, this time I'm stamping it with um, music instead of words. And I'm just going to quickly finish my stamping here before we start our next one. I would like to know if you guys can take a second to chat. Um, where's everybody at? Did you get this page finished? Are you ready to go on to your uh, paper craft with your 12 by 12 piece of paper? Did everybody bring a 12 by 12 piece of paper? I have a I have a, a really big ask here, ladies. Can you all go in and hit the thumbs up button to let us know that you're here and to let YouTube know that um, Somebody we're doing all right, I guess? <laughs> Do you mind? A like, a thumbs up, a like would be really awesome. Yeah, it like, would help us out so it, much. It tells them that that people watched the video and that it was worth um, it's worth putting it on, you know, in front of other people who might be interested. And that's how we're going to grow since we're, you know, brand new group. Um, that's how we're going to get some new. That's how we might come up in a search. Yeah. So I'm just yeah. in with this, but I'm curious. Um, where are you guys at? Are you still knee deep in ink? And that's why nobody can text. I, the last, the last message I see is still from Bernice. So Me too. I don't know. Is everybody there? Is everybody there? <laughs> the question. Are, we there? are we talking to ourselves? It we could be. <laughs> that's funny. Amy, are you here? Or am I just not seeing chat? Because I know that that happens sometimes on here. I usually do, and I'm I'm not seeing anything. But I figured it's because everybody's busy doing their stencil and masking, you know. With you. maybe uh, it says nine people are here, but I don't. I'm not seeing anything. So um, um, I don't even see nine. I think I see. Five. If you guys could just give us a give us a thumbs up and let us know you're here. Sarah, are you still here? We'll see if we see it. Sarah Peterson, are you in the house? So Sarah, did Sarah is Sarah somebody that you know or somebody that Ivy knows? Nope, Sarah is someone I know. Oh, okay. Yeah, she. Um, oh, was, I got it. Amy says she's here. Sorry. Oh, I didn't. Oh, there. Oh, thank you, Amy. Thank Amy. you. Well, at least okay. So, so we're still coming through, Amy. Is that what you're saying? Okay, so on cool. this, Sharon, on the back page, I know this is super delayed, so it might take you a minute to see this, but I didn't do the first layer before I put down my mask. I went ahead and just put them down. No, that's, it's totally up to you. I mean, where yeah. When I did the first layer, but this way, hey, Margie, I love it when Margie's here. Um, I did, so now they could be writing spaces on that journal page. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I'm creating. The way I see it, they have these spaces to write uh, where the hearts are. Yeah. And well, they could write on the whole thing, but this is like a designated place for that. Right. You know, it kind of, uh -huh. and it adds some interest to a page 
that uh, would be, be considered a journaling page. Yes. The same with the bird cage, all this space, but they could write over the whole thing. I mean, there's no reason why they can't write over that vintage photo. It cool. still obviously needs inked and, you know, all of that stuff. But I, I would do that after I added it and you could, you know, glue it in or um, this, this is probably just going to be a whole section or a whole, you know, page. I might even make that my centerpiece. Yeah. Um, I usually put a piece of vellum in the very center um, and do something really artistic so that they can write on the vellum and still see the pretty picture. But this is beautiful, and I think I might even use it for that. So I don't know. So I have a question um, of everybody who's okay. here, everybody who's still here. Um, who is going to? Who has a twelve by twelve piece of cardstock and is going to make um, this second paper craft with me? Yep, it's about your turn. I got to get a piece of twelve by twelve. Okay. Is it decorative paper I'm looking for? In a uh, yes, you, yes. You want it to be uh, printed on both sides. You don't want a white back necessarily. You oh, can okay. So it's going to be a harder piece. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta oh, dig in my bin. Just a second. Card stock, not paper. I did it again. Uh oh. Darn it. This uh -oh. darn clip on my shirt. Uh oh. oh. I'm getting it, ladies. <laughs> See, we're not perfect. No Please one's see. perfect. <laughs> Amy, are you gonna? Okay, I hope you can see still. <laughs> yeah, Amy, are you gonna, gonna make this? Oh my goodness, Sarah, are you still here? Sarah, are you gonna make it? Mm. Amy loses audio when she chats. That's crazy. That is crazy. Okay. Margie, you have 12 by 12 piece of paper. Want to make something with me? Is Kathy still here? I don't see Sarah, and I can't figure it out. I'm thinking. Uh, oh, gosh. Okay, is everybody laughing at me? No, no. I'm just trying to figure out if anybody's even here. I can't. Um, can't see. I, well, I don't know if they're if they're actually hearing us. Uh, except Amy, but Amy said she loses audio when she chats, which is weird. Uh, uh, Faluk, is that Marjorie? That's Margie. Margie. Mm -hmm. uh, can't take the computer in the craft room, so just watching. Oh, okay. Oh, and Amy is too. That's okay. fine. It says nine people are here currently. Okay. So I lost my camera and no one laughed at me. Come on, ladies. That's You're supposed to laugh at me. I'm okay with that. Well, we're laughing with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we're, busy trying, we're busy trying to clean up the ink off my hands for the, the next. Oh, time. yeah. So I don't get black ink all over. Yeah, I'm a messy crafter, so and that's me. This isn't going to take a long time, and I didn't plan to um, completely embellish it. All right, Amy. But if you have a 12 by 12 piece of paper, you could make this. Margie can do it later. Um, I didn't plan to completely embellish it, but show you how to make the base. So that you can, you know, do as many, you know, whatever you want. This is a, a, let me just clean up here a bit. What we're going to make is a mini folio, just a mini flip folio. And it's, uh, okay. Simple, and you can stick it into a journal. You can use it by itself. Um, you could actually do it such that you could put a few things in your purse if you want to just carry it with you. Or if you wanted to give it to somebody with some ephemera or something in it, you know. Okay. Um, so let me grab, and I'm going to put away my stencils mm -hmm. and my stamps while you do that. Okay. So my, uh, we have to wear earbuds to do this, ladies. And my earbud, my cord is in the way because I don't have cordless earbuds. I never wear earbuds. We um, see a little bit I of your cord randomly there. have this pair. What's that? We see just a tiny bit of your cord. And every time she stands up. Well, Every time you stand up, yeah, and it, it's attached, and that's why your phone goes or your yeah, and over it goes. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not used to being tethered. Yeah, <laughs> you can't hold a good woman down. <laughs> nope, you can't. And I'm so sorry for like I did that last time too. I will have to eventually. I'll start remembering that I am tied to the desk mm -hmm. because, or I'll get some wireless earbuds. But I think those are pretty expensive, aren't they? 
I, I wouldn't yeah. invest in something unless I used it enough. I think maybe maybe what we talked about before today, that might take care of the problem. But let's. Yeah. Research. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. All right. I'm I just don't want to here. Don't my camera every time. No, no, no kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. So here is. Oh, and this is where it's really weird because when you look at our screen right here, it looks really grainy and really out of focus and like you can't see. And then we watched it back later and it was a perfectly clear picture. Yeah. Yeah. It's Isn't that awkward. weird? It's really awkward and we'll get it. We'll, you know, we'll learn to just go, okay, it looks grainy, but it's not. <laughs> but I, yeah, I have to not look at it because there's yeah. such a huge delay and it makes it confusing yeah. for me. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, it really is. Okay. Yeah, and I can show you later and, you know, I can text you a little video or, or you just go back in and look at it later like we do. and, and Yeah, so I'll just rewatch it later. <laughs> yeah, in the real time. Okay, so here's our mini folio and this is the, the front just, you know, decorated however you want to. I just embellished this one just so you can get an idea of what you can do with it. If I was sticking this into a journal, this is how I might embellish it. Be bold on the front. And this, see this feather? But... I don't know if hopefully you, I think you can tell. This feather doesn't look very feathery. It looks more like hair. <laughs> it's because it's from my baby Silky. No, this is a frizzle. They have Silkies and Frizzles babies and their feathers are like hair with waves in the wind. It doesn't stay all structured like a regular feather does. So I guess oh, yeah. clean them and use them for art. So a flower fairy here and, and just a little bit of washi and a, and a, um, a stamp with some botanicals on it. You know, just very simple. Okay, so we'll flip it open. Have you guys seen gold vellum? That's what this is. <laughs> gold vellum. I had never is that the stuff I sent you? Yes, I'd never seen gold vellum before. And I opened up a package, happy mail that Sharon, uh, Sharon sent me. And I see these things stamped on this gold. And I'm like, that's the coolest paper ever. She says it's, <laughs> it's just vellum. And I'm like, yeah, I think it's oh. just vellum. It came from my mom uh, yeah, in her in gold. her office stuff she gave me. It's really cool. So this is just a stamp stamped on there. And then I just cut it out. All right, Amy. Yay, yay, yay. She's got a 12 by 12. And this over yay! here is a piece of washi tape with the image of this vintage lady on it. Okay. So we flipped it once, and now we're going to flip it open again, and there's your whole folio. I'll put it down here so you can see the whole thing. And so you can see that this is 12 inches long, 3, 6, 9, 12. That's the one side of our 12 by 12 paper. Now, if you look closely, you can see there's a pocket here, some butterflies. You know, this is where the 20-second delay gets me, Marianne. Yeah. Because I, I don't see what you're talking about right. while you're doing it, so it's oh. weird. <laughs> Listen yeah. to what you're saying so that when you do see it, you'll know to look for pockets and, you know, whatever. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just not going to look at the screen. Yeah. <laughs> and inside here is a, a journal card with a belly band on it with a smaller journal card on it and a butterfly. Nice little butterfly. And then the next section has a pocket and a second pocket. And it has a little tag that could be written on. And in the back is one of those really easy uh, envelope, letter envelopes that we made with our idea book. So that whole thing could be written on. And what's kind of cool, I feel like I'm yelling. I'm going to take it down a little bit. What's kind of cool. <laughs> back of this paper actually has stripes on it that make for perfect writing lines. So that just worked out really cool. Okay. So that's oh, yeah. in the pocket there. Okay. The third section also has a pocket and inside here, look at this tiny, tiny little tuck pocket. See that? And just a couple little things. Here's a very old, um, uh, tag. Just an old tag tucked in there and a tiny little frame picture tucked in there. And then the fourth section has two pockets again. The one in front has another little tag that could be written on. And the one in back has matching piece of paper and you can journal back here, but it's a tear pad. 
And so I've got a little pink um, uh, staple there that matches. And it's just got some little pieces of paper that you could write on and tear off. Or you could leave on if you want to just journal on them and leave it there. You could. Okay. Did you make the pad? Did, is did. it like a scrap stack? We did. And we're going we're gonna to do that as part of it. Oh, okay. So both of these fold in. And then there's the front. And on the back, it's just an embellishment here. I left it blank. I was debating whether to put a picture in here or to put a, a sentiment, a word or something. But I decided that I would just leave it so that who gets it um, could choose. Maybe that's where they want to put their name. Maybe that's where they want me to sign it that I made. I typically sign it down here, though. And they could put something else in there. Maybe they want to put a little school picture of one of their kids or themselves or, you know, something there. So that's what we're going to make is our all mini right. flip folio. Now, here's one that is not all embellished. Okay. And it's super, super easy. On the back of this one is just this same paper cut out with a punch. See that punch? And I put it upside down so that the opposite side of the paper, the gray part shows, and then a sentiment could be put in there. And so I'm gonna show you how to make it now and how to get all the pockets. And you actually can create as many pockets as you want. You'll notice these pockets are probably not exactly the same as the other pockets because every time I look at it, I think, hmm, different pockets. And hopefully it's showing up in color wise on the screen, but this washi tape that I just happened to see in my drawer when I was looking for some things is the exact same colors of these stripes in the paper. So I just had to put that across the bottom. Okay. <laughs> and then this is the rest of this 12 by 12 piece of paper. And that's what we use to make all those elements that go inside. So grab your piece of 12 by 12 paper you do not need a paper cutter, but if you have one, um, sometimes it goes faster. But you can just grab a pair of scissors and do it with a pair of scissors. Some, a lot of the stuff I'll just do with scissors here. So first thing, hey, Marianne, I'll, yeah, I'm going to grab a different piece just so you know. I'm pulling my earbud out okay. Uh, okay. because I don't think I'm looking at this and seeing the project. What I the feel like it needs a different piece. What is the backside? <laughs> It just looks like plain. I just want a different color, I think. Yeah. I think I'm going to, this will go in a different style. Something with design or flowers or something. Yeah. I love uh, pockets. I love pockets too, Margie. But mostly I love tinies. <laughs> I love mini anythings. I keep looking at things and then figure out ways to make mini versions of them. I started this. This is uh, my version of a mini altered book. It's... um. Uh, I'll just show you, Margie, because you like tiny too. Here, it's a composition book. You know, those little mini three-inch composition books? And I did it just like an altered book. And I haven't finished it. I got to finish that. And then maybe we'll do that on one of these too, because I love the tiny little altered books. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is cut this strip off up here. I know that this strip has a name, and I cannot, for the life of me, remember the name. So if one of you knows that, please type it in because that would help me. But if I leave it on, this is greater than 12 by 12. And also it's got that hole on there. That's just so the paper stack that it's in can be hung. All right. So I'm going to take that off. And now I have um, my 12 by 12 piece of paper. So first thing I want to do is decide which side... Sharon's getting her earbud back in. Okay. There yep. she is. Okay. I, you want to hear something funny? I only have a few pieces of double-sided paper. You what? I only have a few pieces of double-sided paper. Wow. And <laughs> Everything I have is like one-sided. Solid is fine. This one that I just showed him has, has is solid on the back, but it is colored. Yeah. Right. Now, I will tell you that when you do this, if, you, if there's a um, paper that you really want to use, maybe it matches else and the back side is white and I would go ahead and do it before I start gluing all this down I would take some stencils and a blending brush and I would go along the white in here and I would just stencil a design like with vintage photo and that becomes the back uh -huh. that becomes the back you so, could do what I just did yeah you can you can so you can work yeah. with a piece of paper but it is nice to have the two sided 
So thank you, Margie. Branding strip. I don't know why I could not think of that today for the life of me. So now what? my that that little white strip on the top that I just cut off. Oh that's a branding strip. Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Some of and I couldn't think of the name. Um and like this one, maybe I should have used this one. This one is great. I love that paper. The branding, strip, the branding strip also has the design on it that's the same as the back. And so when I cut this off, I can use that as a belly band because it's tiny, a tiny belly band. Oh, oh yeah. I have some that are actually um, decorated on that, on that strip on the top. Yeah. And then, yeah. That's what I'm, that's the one I just showed. And I know it's so far behind. Yeah see it but yeah so showing that one the strip across the top has the same design on it that the back of the paper does so it's perfect this one that oh. i'm using is only solid white so i probably won't be using that as a belly band so if, what i want to do then is decide which i want to be my front which when i say front i would mean the outside and which do i want to be the inside back okay so I, and also which direction you want to turn the paper if there are directions on it. Okay. It okay. Obviously this way. And I think that would make a cool inside. And how's that for the outside? Hmm. Boy, I like that paper. Isn't that cool looking? You're holding up that white strip now. That's how oh, far behind I, my video is. So far behind. Yeah, this is a cool. I actually pulled this out thinking oh. they it's a paper. <laughs> I love the floral paper. Yeah. Oh, I oh. love them both. This one? The one with the, the big the flower. The big red and green flowers? Yeah. Okay. That's the one that That's has the, on the branding strip it has the um pattern. Oh, and the one that I'm using does not. Okay. So I really like this to be on the inside. However, on the outside, this part that's kind of green is almost the whole width, and I don't want that. This one, it's smaller, so I get much more pattern on the outside. So I think this, I want this to be my outside, and I want this to be my top. Okay. So oh, that's pretty. Yeah. So here's the thing this is four inches tall. Oh, yeah. I, I will keep this white one. I won't use it as a belly band. Margie just said she's seen them used for sentiments too. These are really oh. nice hard stock. I keep every one of these that I cut off and then I take my stamps and I stamp sentiments on there because then I just cut them apart because it's good. I do that on my page edges. It's good quality paper. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so what's on my outside and what's on my top, I want to be this right here. So that means that I have to turn it this way to cut it, right? So if I'm turning, I have the, I have facing, as Sharon, I'm trying to explain because I know you can't see yet. I have facing up the, what I want to be the outside of my book, my folio. Okay. Facing up. And now okay. I have... I have on my left and my right, I have on my left, facing left, the end that I want to be the top. And it might not matter with your floral pattern. Got it. Well, it does on the other side because it's a okay. really cool scrolly. Where yeah. your left hand is, is the top, going to be the top. Okay. So now I'm going to put it into my guillotine cutter and I want four inches for my folio. And then I want another four inches for my pockets inside. So that means... So we're going to cut it in two pieces? Um, yes. So I'm going to cut... I need eight inches for that. And because it's a 12-inch piece of paper, that's going to leave a four-inch strip. So I'm going to put it in my guillotine cutter on eight inches. And I'm going Which to cut off, cut off a four-inch strip. As soon as this catches up, you'll get it. And the I do not have a guillotine, so I am looking for eight inches. Perfect. Yep. That way. Correct. And actually, it goes this way because this actually starts at zero. Uh, you could at, go or at the ten. top and, and the bottom and put a little mark there or something, and you can tear it or you can cut it or any way you yeah. want. Okay. So I've cut off. Well, I'm side. actually going to do it on the other side because there's a pattern, and it's easier to cut this and see where I'm at. 
Okay, and I love it when they have an all over pattern like that. Or do you have a do you have a paper trimmer at all? I do. Okay. Because it would, yeah, it wouldn't matter if it's a guillotine or the slider one or whatever it is. Um, sometimes when I make them, I just put the ruler down and pour them, depending on what kind of look I want with what paper I'm using. So okay. could this just be folded in half, Marianne, and ma to make a larger one? Because you're wanting two pieces of this in the end, correct? Um, correct. The two, what well, I cut it into, I cut the 12 inch piece into an eight inch piece and a four inch piece. Okay. Uh oh, my screen just went away. There we go. Can you guys okay. see her? Technology. Oh, geez, please let us know if you can still see. This is crazy. All right, so I have an eight inch piece and a four inch piece that side by side equal a 12 by 12. Okay. Okay, and this is how we're doing this out of only one piece of paper. And I mean, all right, whatever you want, and you could use multiple pieces of paper, that's fine. But the idea is that you can take one piece of paper and make that whole folio that I just did. Okay, so yeah, so you're gonna be, you know, about a minute behind in seeing what that's I'm fine. Doing. All right, that's so I'm fine. A four inch strip, and I'm going to set it aside, and I'm using the eight inch strip. The eight inch strip is going to fold in half. And I'm going to go ahead and score that at four inches to fold in half. If you don't have a scoreboard, it, that's okay. You can just fold it in half and make a good, strong crease. Thank you. I don't like this. Oh, Margie and Amy. <laughs> but if you have a scoreboard, um, take this eight inch piece of paper and score it at four inches so that... I've scored the entire 12 inch length at a four inch width. So that when I fold that in half, I now have a 12 by four in my hand, but it's folded in half, so it's double, right? Okay. Maybe, Sharon, it's uh, Margie's suggesting maybe if you refresh, you might have a shorter lag. I don't okay. know. Possible. It seems like it's much might longer. make me go away altogether. <laughs> it's like it's much longer lag than it ever has been before. It is. It's almost. It's like a minute. Yeah. Do you no, want it still there? Wow. Do Isn't you that want crazy? Do you want to try coming back in and see if it helps at all? No, we'll just leave it. I'm good. I can. I'm listening. So and I'm watching right. the comments. So now I have these two, and well, it's one folded in half. And this is going to be my outside. See how it's folded, would be folded like that. And this is the inside, which is where all these pockets are. But now I need these pockets. And all these pockets are just one, those, the one piece of paper, not, um, not all separated. So here's how we're going to do that. First, we need to know where it's going to fold. Okay. So we're going to open it up again because we need to score where it's going to fold. So I'm going to score right down the middle of the 12 inches at six inches. So it would fold in half. I don't have a scoreboard and I'm trying to think of what I can use for a scoreboard. When so I everybody else can do the same. When I don't have one with me, I take a ruler and a ruler with a fatter edge works really well. And I'll put the ruler down where I want, need it exactly to be. And then I lift up the paper like this and I put my finger underneath it and I run my finger back and forth until I get closer and closer and closer in and get a nice bend like that. Okay. I have a really cool triangular ruler here. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's probably perfect for this, actually. And yeah. I don't, this is a really old ruler. It's I very cool. Yeah, I have one of those. It's from my Do you? in laws that Aren't are. Aren't they unusual? Yeah, they are. That's what they used to have like 100 years ago. They are yeah. Pretty. Okay, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this down here because I scored it six inches, but I need to score in the middle of each one of these. So this can fold over and this can fold over. But what I want to be careful of is that when this folds over, it doesn't get onto that center fold. Otherwise, this won't fold. Does that make sense? It'll make sense when you see it, Sharon. 
Okay. Uh, okay. So I, this at 12 inches would be three, 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 and three. But if I leave this at three and then that at three, it's not going to close. So what oh, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I scored the center. This is where I am at right now. I scored the center one. Yeah. Now, I'm just folding these two. <laughs> Or fold. Yeah. Now I'm going to do these two, but I'm going to make them slightly less than smaller. Mm -hmm. Ever so slightly less than three so that they have plenty of room to close. Even it's funny because now I'm just folding my paper. Yeah. Which yeah, is I don't need to score it. I'm just doing exactly. towards the center exactly. in half and then inside. Yep. yep. So make sure. essentially what you've done is divided it into four pieces. Yeah. Can you see me on time? Yep. I see you live. You see me uh, folding? Yep. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well. I'm going to fold it back in half and I'm going to go back here and I want to fold these folds and I want to any folds and she uses a ruler. Yeah. Depending on how stiff the paper is, you know, how clean I want that to be, <laughs> hair, you know, all those things. Okay, I'm gonna. I want to fold. Thank you. And I want to get a good, <laughs> get a, good um, a good crease on those because I need to be able to see where those okay. are. I also don't have a bone folder. I have scissors. I have sharp rulers. The rulers work great, and right now I'm just using my fingers for that. <laughs> Who needs a bone folder? Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this because we're really not gonna use it again anyway. Okay. Okay. All righty. Now. Okay, uh, we got good creases. Yep. Now I'm back to having my 12 by 8 piece of paper folded in half. But now I have three creases. So it will fold up actually into the four. <laughs> good job, Sharon. Margaret, congratulations <laughs> for doing it. Side yeah, I said, yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, my, my chat was a little slow there. Okay. <laughs> so. It's okay. My camera's slow, so we're good. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sounds like we're even. <laughs> so you look at, this is my outside where the flowers are. And so uh -huh. go to the inside here where the flowers are. That's the other half of this. And I just cut the top off. See that? So yeah. it'll make sense in a second. You'll see it. It's just um, folding up. Yeah. yeah. So all I'm going to do is kind of look at this. And I want to show you two different things here. This one, when I cut it, I went all the way to the crease. This one, when I cut it, I brought the, the point right here. And the crease is over there. So there's that much space between the crease. And then I started up for the next one. So you don't actually have to cut it to a crease for this, okay? And so we're going to, we'll put both of those there so you can kind of see. And if you want to do it how I, you know, how I did it just for the first time to get a good feel for it, you can. But I'm going to go over here and say on this first crease to the right, starting from the right, I want to leave at least an inch down here. And I want to have my pocket down far enough where I can tuck something in and see it. And also, when I cut this piece off up top, it gives me more to use to make elements. Okay? Right. I'm not even going to measure or ruler or anything. I just grab some scissors. And because I'll show you afterwards how the second pocket works out perfectly, even if you haven't measured it. I'm going to grab some scissors and I'm going to start over here on the right. I'm going to give it, mm, let's say, that much angle. And I think I'll do it like this one again. And on this one, I went all the way to the corner. No, I'm going to do that one because that's what I want to show you that. Okay, so I'm going to take it all the way to the corner. The corner being the, the fold. Okay, see how I just cut that? So we've cut the first section there. Now, mm -hmm. I find it easier than to come to the left and do the left one next. And so the left one, just for some interest, I started at the bottom and went up so we could go up and down and, you know, have a little bit of chain. I think well, I'm going to round mine. Cool. 
So I want to leave at least an inch down here. So I've got something to glue and hold it all together and making note with my finger kind of where my fold is so I don't want to go past that. And I want to make this one a little taller so that all my peaks aren't exactly the same. So I'll start mm -hmm. up here. And I feel like I'm yelling again. Why is it? That you're not nope, you're fine. With me. I feel like I have to talk so loud. Okay, so now I've got the left one and the right one cut. So we're just making them all different, correct? Well, and then I'm just going to go here to the, from the left, the point of the left one, and I'm going to take it straight down to the point on the bottom of the right one. That's why it's easier to do the left, the right one, and then the left one, and then just meet them, cut them until they meet. Okay. Hopefully that will catch up there. All right. So let me move these out of the way. Okay. So now when you fold this up, it'll fold a little easier because it doesn't have quite the bulk that it had. Although I am finding something is hung up. That one is folded too close. So I'm just going to take a tiny bit off right there. No biggie. If it's in my way, we clip it off. There we go. That gives it a little more room to close. Okay. And I need to get a good solid fold down there. All right. Okay. So if I open that back up. What I'm going to do ultimately, but not immediately, I'm going to, I like the rounded. I think maybe I should try rounded. That's cool. You see it? Yeah, I do. <laughs> so I did it unevenly. Yeah. But I am going to, you know, like, so this is a, like a, 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 a Tuck spot, tuck spot, yep. pocket, tuck spot. Yeah. Um, but I want this to be a little bit more straight here. Okay, so it doesn't have to be, but. I'm going to glue each one at the fold. <laughs> Ta-da! Thank you, Margie. Um, but before I do that, I want to see if there's anything I need to slip underneath. So remember on the far right one, we had two pockets, one in the back, one in the front. It's the one in the front, this is the one that it's exactly like. It's the one in the front that we have right here. See that? Like an extra tuck? It's, pretend that one isn't there. It's this one in the front that that is the one we cut. So we need to put that uh -huh. in the back and we wanna put that down before we glue this down and before we glue that edge down, okay? So I'm gonna come over here to this. This is what I cut off. This is my off cut. And I cut it from here, which tells me that this is the exact same angle as what it was attached to, right? I mean, duh, Mary. Correct. That's obvious. Okay, so I'm gonna cut at the fold. I'm gonna cut that last piece off. Ultimately, I'll end up cutting this into four sections. Each one. Right. So what your goal is right here is to make a, a, a double pocket right there. Is that right? Yes. So I'm just going to slide this. Okay. Okay. Off. So this is the exact same angle. And I, I like that because it, it looks like that. It's you know, the exact same angle. But um, I don't want it to be that quite that tall. So I'm going to, yeah. I'm not going to cut off the top because I might change the angle if I want them to look like they just came that way. I'm gonna cut off the bottom, which is the straight, the flat side, but I wanna see how far, how much do I wanna cut it off? That's about a half an inch between, and that's gonna give me a really nice strip down here to use for something else. So I'm gonna cut it like right at that strip, mm. and then I tuck this underneath. When I tuck that underneath, I now have two pockets, and you I'm sure that you can hardly see the second one because they are the same pattern, and that's the back. I could use the other side of that and turn this over, but then it, it blends in with the back. So if I do this way, and then I tuck something in back here, and then I tuck uh -huh. something in... Oh, I like it going back and forth like that. Um, come on, come on. There we go. And then I tuck something in up front. Then you can tell that there's two pockets there. 
Okay. So I think my camera is, uh, or my feed is caught up to your camera almost now. Ooh, wow. But I'm only mine is behind. Like what I see uh -huh. is, you know, like my, my view is 20 seconds or a minute Eight, off. Four. Yeah. It's, it's really a long time. I so I think we're doing better. I feel like I'm seeing you real time. What's that? I feel like I'm seeing you real time. That like what you're, what you're, you're seeing it. Yeah. I feel like I see your hands real time. You so, probably do. I just don't because it's my feed. Yeah. I'll see it so in real time when we watch it back. What you're putting in there, you're making it a completely different. Uh huh. <laughs> I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's fine because ultimately you can change it however you want, you know. Right. So <laughs> if you only have one piece of paper and you want to make a whole folio, right. you can do it with right. one 12 inch paper. You don't need the second paper that Sharon's doing. No. No, okay, so I'm just doing it because I, I would like to see another pattern in the middle there. That's all. That so is all. I'm is, actually going to make this a straight off pocket. So that's why. So this is the, this is the back of this one or the, the end. So I cut that off. I'm going to turn it upside down or not flip it around, not upside down. And it's going to go right here all the way at the bottom. And I don't want it to be totally up against that. Tree. Or again, this won't fold. It'll get too tight. So the easiest way is to stand it up like this and then see where that needs to be so that it can fold sufficiently. And that's where you want to glue it. When you pull it back, you can see you probably have a sixteenth of an inch there. And then that gives me some extra out here, which I'll want to cut off. So I will do that. If I cut that off and make that even out here, then uh is it margie i'm sorry margie margie she says make two at a time and mix the yeah. paper that's a great idea cut them and mix it up yeah i like idea. that especially uh complementing colors yeah right this is my grandma's vintage wrapping paper and i just yeah. doubled it up so i just wanted to see another pattern in there with some lighter color because this is so dark so there yeah. is a pattern on this red i don't know if you can see it but there is a mm -hmm. pattern it's pretty. It's like my favorite stencil almost. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Sorry. Amy if, Amy, if you're talking about this strip across the top, yes, you'll cut that into sections where, where it bends, where you've already done the folding, the pre-folding. Cut that into those sections. Okay. Now, I'm going to leave this one. Well, no, I'm going to glue this one down. So we'll move on. We won't have to come back to it. Okay. So I already showed you how we're going to fit that and glue that. So I'm going to do art glitter glue so it's quick. Okay. So I'm holding the bottom one in, I'm lifting up the top one. I'm going to glue. Um, I need to do this first. First, we'll do the, the bottom piece and I just want to do it around three sides. And leave the top open, obviously, for a pocket. Okay. So now I can hold the top so I can fold this and make sure I get it where it needs to be so it'll still fold. But that's why I cut, when, when it hung over the edge, I cut it off right there. So when I come back and actually glue it, I know that if I line this edge up, the inside's going to be lined up just fine. That was my purpose in doing that. Okay, so the inside pocket is on there. So now I'm going to glue this one down. And all I want to do on this one is the two ends. Wait, wait. Amy's completely lost. What 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 can we help you with, Amy? Uh, she cut okay. her strip in pieces. The the cutoff strip, right? Let's back up. Yeah, don't watch me. I'm I'm I should yeah. <laughs> you should do it as I do it, and then do it different yes. later. <laughs> yeah, once you get the hang of it, then you can. And I could hate my result. I'm just trying, you know, a. a I'm trying to use this, another piece of paper. So Amy, where are you at? Can you tell us where, where you're at, what steps you've done? And what strip you cut into pieces? Do, well, do, 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 do. <laughs> um, so you had the, 
the eight, 12 by eight and you had the 12 by four. And then we did the folds. So first I wanna know, Amy, were you able to get these folds done like that in the right places so that you ended up with a folio like that? So tell us yes, folded or no, not folded. Okay. I think I maybe she's lost on the, if I had to guess, I think she's lost on the additional, the four inch piece that you pulled out to tuck in. I think that's where she decided she was lost. So I didn't, oh, I, didn't, um, she's, I didn't pull out the additional four inch piece to tuck in. I'm up to gluing the second pocket thing. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Amy, this top strip that was your cut off, you cut that into four, the four sections, right? And, and that you should, you should have cut that into four sections and we're making the first one, the pocket here. So what I did was take, say this was the piece that was cut off over here. Just wanna make sure that she's. Yes, folded, yes, she folded. says. Oh, perfect, boy, and that's, that's a real delay. That's yeah, isn't that weird? Yes. I don't know how they can fix that. Um, is it? And I, I want to know: is it our technology lagging, or is it theirs? I don't know. I don't know if it's YouTube or I. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Kind of weird. I have, yeah, I have it on my phone on the side, just to try to see you know where they're at, what they see, and uh huh, and it, it's delayed on there as well. Weird, huh? Oh, I'm getting glue everywhere. You guys are watching this and you're not saying a word. <laughs> um, it would not be crafting with Sharon also if I didn't get glue everywhere because I do it every time and I knock over my camera. I have more than four pieces. Okay, that's okay. That's okay, Amy. We'll do, we can deal with that. So that's all right. That's, uh, that's not a, you still have this one with this piece folded over and you cut that off and then you took that cut off strip and cut it into more than four pieces, if I understand correctly. So starting here, um, did you do you have a piece that would fit behind the right hand fold to make that double pocket? If you've got a piece, and all you have to do is find one that has that angle, like this one. And if you have to cut that angle down a little bit more to match, and like this one was like that tall, and I didn't want it that tall, so I just cut it down. I cut the bottom off to bring it down to that angle. I just made lemons out of lemon, or lemonade out of lemons there. <laughs> Glued with my fingers. <laughs> okay. Make the smaller pockets to go behind the ones in the folio, Amy. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so Amy, so make the pocket for there and just and glue that one down all three sides. And once that's down, then fold the top over it and only glue down the two edges. Because now this. we have our pocket in the front and we have our pocket in the back. <clears throat> Already glued at the bottom pocket. Perfect. All right. You're ready to go on then. Okay. So then I don't put a double pocket on every one of them. But if we come over here where it comes really tall, I put a double pocket here. But this one's in front. I'm going to be taller. And this one, you can turn it over and use the back side of the paper. So you do have the contrast. Both of these show the back side of the paper used there. This one's a smaller pocket and this one's a little bit taller pocket. So Amy, you've cut them in pieces, so that's fine. All you wanna do is take those pieces and find one that seems to fit. Actually, that was, I think that was the right one for me. Find one that seems to fit in that tall section right there. And it doesn't have to be that tall. Um, and this is a weird angle. No, I, I'm all right. I might like that at a weird angle. If we don't want it that tall, we just pull it down to where we do want it and then cut it off right there. And I think, 
I want to leave enough on this side that I can glue it down to have a full pocket. So maybe it's that my angle is too deep there. So I'm going to make that angle just a little less sharp. So I really didn't take anything off at this end, but I made it a little shorter there. So oh, I see what you're doing. Leave that much. Okay. So, so now I could actually just leave it. I don't need to cut anything off the bottom and it's a sufficient pocket right there. I could even take that angle down a little farther, but it's nice to have, you know, kind of the contrast of the angle. So this one, before I put that pocket on, I'm going to go ahead and glue both of these down at the creases. So I'm going to go to the inside and this is where you do need something with a point. And remember I've said in uh, tutorials before, if you've seen them, that we always want to put the glue on the smaller of the two pieces that you're gluing together. So, because if I put it on here, I might not know where to stop and I might put glue all the way up and then I just get my fingers all sticky glue while I'm trying to wipe it off. If I put it on the bottom piece, I'm gonna start with this one in here. If I put it on the bottom piece, then I know that I'm gonna go all the way to the top. Of course, I left my pin out of it too long and now it's getting all... It's okay, I got too much ink on my thing and now my paper, my black and white paper's wet or my brown and white polka dots are wet. Okay. And then I spilled glue. So I think we're even now. <laughs> really? All right. So it's always a party. <laughs> yeah. One kind or the other. Okay. So hopefully yep. that, um, yeah, the possibilities are endless. You're right, uh, Margie, because you could actually cut it endless different ways. And by yeah. you cut it, you can put different pockets in. Okay, so see where right on the two creases is where I'm gluing that, Amy. So just glue those down. Okay, so I still have pockets uh -huh. glued down. So there's the actual folio. But now I'm going to take this one and I'm going to put the contrasting side up so I can see that. Now, when you do this, you want to look and make sure that it's inside the crease line on both sides because if it isn't if it's on the crease line like right there that is not going to fold see how that just popped up because there isn't enough room so i need to trim that just a bit so that it will be inside the crease line i don't want a glue that's exploding right now <laughs> i put all my glue away um, um let me see all right so if now, i get up again you know what happens yeah on this one, I'm going to do three sides. There we go. So I've got three sides glued, the top open. And I'm going to put that right there, making sure that it's inside both creases. I can pull that up to make sure it folds, make sure it'll bend. And I pull this one up to make sure it'll bend. i got plenty of room on that one. Had to push that one over a little bit. There we go. So now they're both in there. Okay, so that's what you should end up with is a pocket, a double pocket, a pocket, and a double pocket. Pocket or tuck, whatever you want to. <laughs> Margie, 100 miles an hour. Yeah, you got to do it. And then all of a sudden you're going to like, I have to do a second one because I want to cut it this way. And now I have to do another one because I want to cut it this yeah. way. This idea and that idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's Margie. Kind of are you like are you like us? Yeah. <laughs> Does that happen? <laughs> Your brain is like, oh, I'm glad to see that we're not that weird, you know, all alone. That other people are like us. I'm okay. so glad we found each other. Really? <laughs> so yeah, you know, that's the base of our folio right there. And so now we're gonna now we go get that first four inch piece that we cut off. Now is when we use that piece to start playing with it. This is what we use to make all the elements, to make journal cards, to make this little um, envelope. Um, what do we, <laughs> I can't even think. It's a uh, journal spot, but it's like the envelope that folds open to make this tiny little tuck. This is the cutest. 
and to make some tags and to make a tear a tear book. So I love tiny things. But I want to show you before you go to that one, I still have three pieces of paper sitting here. I still have this uh, rectangle one, which I think would make a great belly band. And honestly, I'm thinking that might make a great belly band right there. But we'll get to that in a minute. And I've got both of these. Um, this one, take the things out of it. Look at this one. If this wasn't glued and this opened up, do you see what shape it would be? Uh, What's that? One of these. A rectangle? Well, there, it's a rectangle here, but then if this opened up, it would just come out to a point. So it's like a triangle on, and a rectangle, which is like this. Like, except that's too big. <laughs> so, okay, we'll use. Okay, hold on. My brain is going 100 miles an hour. Yeah, mine is too, and I need to slow it down and back it up. <laughs> yeah, you should. I think you're going a little fast for us. Okay. I'm going to take one of these little pieces of paper and I'm going to make a little a little guy like this. I'm going to use my brush. That seems to always be a problem. This is not as big, but it can do the same thing. But that would be really tiny. So I'm going to do it on this one because this one is just about the right size. Yeah, this one will work just about the right size. Okay. So the first thing that I did when I made this was just make a rectangle. And for size, this was two inches. So I made a, a rectangle that was two inches wide, almost. I mean, it's literally just shy of two inches. And it could be smaller than that. It could be bigger than that, whatever you want. This one's maybe just a tiny bit smaller than that because that's where my paper is good. Okay, I'm going to cut off these edges too because they're... Hey, of... Amy, how are you doing? Doing okay? You caught up? Yeah, did you get it glued down on both tech spots? Let us know if you're there. Okay, so it's now hard to, it's hard to keep up and chat. I know that. So, you know, her hands are probably full. So now I've got a <laughs> rectangle. And that's how this one started was as a rectangle. Okay. And so I'm going to fold it. And all I have, it doesn't have to be as big as this if I don't want it to be. So if I decide I only want it to be maybe an inch and a quarter like this one. Uh, yeah, that's just over an inch and a quarter. Then I can fold it wherever I want. I want it to be about that big, I think. That's probably an inch and a half. Okay, so I fold it at an inch and a half. So first thing I'm going to do is cut off the extra. And that's a nice little strip. Okay. So now I essentially have a little booklet, right? Just to open, close, open, close. Okay, which looks like this, except the front. There's no tuck spot yet. And so all we do oh. is go from this corner to that corner. Cute. Crazy as usual. <laughs> Amy, did you get the did you get both of the pockets glued down and then the other seams? Are you there? Okay. Marjorie okay. says, welcome to the club, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Margie, Amy is kind of new to all this. Yeah. She decided she's going to jump in feet first and take it all in. So like the rest of us. We're back yeah. here by fire. Yeah. The same way we all got it. Yeah. Okay. So if this is my little, going to be my little uh, pocket there, removable pocket, I just need to go from this corner to this corner to make a place to tuck things in, right? So I'll open it up and I'm just gonna cut from this corner to that corner. So, 
A triangle, kind of. Yeah. Yep, a triangle in front. So that it looks just like that. That's all it is. And then all I do is and put where does this go? Tiny, tiny strip of glue down in the bottom to close it so that it is an actual tuck spot closed. Now this could be glued on as a tuck spot or it can be tucked into one of those pockets. Oh, cute. So it could take that and I could actually glue it right there if I wanted. But like on this one, I just filled it up and then it's cute. Tucked it in one of the pockets. Okay, so there's one. There's one of our elements. We've got a tiny little tuck spot pocket there. Okay, and so now let's make one of these because if you were going to put it with a journal, isn't that awesome, Margie? I love that. Paper crafting forever. And still somebody looks at something funny and gets a wild idea. And all of a sudden we take off to something totally new. I, I love learning new things. That's why we're really trying to get artists of, from all um, walks of life into happy paper people so that we're not all doing the exact same thing so that we can learn from each other. Oh, that's so cute, Amy. Tiny, tiny little book. Size of your thumb. Yeah, that's about what this is. Well, no, this is bigger than that. This is twice the size of your thumb. How cute. That Thumbelina book would be adorable. So let's make one of these because this is great journaling space. So one of these um, envelopes, just super easy, super easy journaling envelopes. Okay, so we're going to take this and decide how big do I want it to be. I could literally cut a rectangle right here and just make it this big and then make it a tiny one. Hey, Shirley, how are you? Good to see you. So if you really wanted it to be a tiny, tiny little envelope, I'm going to do that because all the others I've made a little bit bigger. So um, how wide? Uh, I'm going to say I want it to be about two inches. I'm actually, I think I'm going to fold it right there. And so I cut it straight because I'm not. No, that just takes too much time. I'm just going to put it on here and cut two inches off. <laughs> two inches. There we go. That's the fastest way for me, folks. Uh-oh, we lost Sharon completely, didn't we? That means her phone probably overheated. Okay, so then you know how we do these. We just fold the top two points down to make a point at the very top. That becomes the top of our envelope. We'll put a little bit of glue under those to hold them down. Doesn't take much. Just sticking my head into support and give you a thumbs up. Thank you, Shirley. Really do appreciate it. Thanks for stopping in. Looking forward to hearing your comments about what we did tonight. Oh, no. Trying to get back in, Sharon. Okay. And then we fold this up. And remember, we don't want to fold it all the way because it's got to have room to fold down. Okay. Fold the top down. And there's our mini envelope. And this one is super tiny, which I really like. This one I just used a little... Um, th this one's an actual stamp. Sometimes I use faux stamps and put there as a... As a, um, you know, a little closure... But I wonder, we could make one out of the same kind of paper if we wanted. We could actually, um, I was looking for a punch. I've got a one-inch hole punch sitting here. Not a lot of punches right there. Um, what if I put this piece of paper in here, right in the middle, and put it through the one-inch hole punch? And so I get something that's part of a circle, but it's actually the same on both sides. And then I can use that. But I, I don't, I'm not crazy about that because there's no contrast. Well, if we put it on that side, there's a little bit better contrast. But, you know, I'd probably put it there and then I'll put something on top of that to make it pop out. Because it's really um, kind of hard to see. 
All right, so on this one, all I'm gonna do is a little glue across the, the bottom half. All right, hang on, we'll get Sharon in here. Yeah. There we go. Are you back here? Awesome. I think so, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. So the important thing when all you're right. these these closures is that you don't put it very far up because if your top of your envelope sticks into it, if the point sticks into it too far, then it's really hard to get out and you end up tearing it off or bending your you know envelope more than you want to. So you don't want it in more than more than a quarter of the way. And honestly, just the tip, just the tip of the point of the flap is all you want in there. That's all you want. And so that's, I just got glue all over it. That's okay. I'll put something over that tomorrow, whether it's a little sentiment or a flower or something. And so that will fold nicely on there. But see how just barely the tip is in? That's all you want underneath there. Okay, so now we have a tiny, tiny little envelope to journal on. And look at this, we've got a ton. We've got a ton of, of um, stuff left to make little elements, miniature elements. Paper. So now let's cut a piece and make one of those Yay. little hair books. And I'm gonna say, let, well, if we know if these sections are about three inches, it needs to be smaller than that to go in the section. So let's go two and a half inches. Okay, two and a half inches. And I better put the pin in this or it will be all dried. Um, oh, come on, come on, come on. Come on. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to grab um, one piece of coffee dyed paper. Not that one. They're over here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Not that one. I put them over here so they would be close to me. And then I went over somewhere else to grab them. Okay, so just one, one piece of paper. Oh, this one's got great texture. This is awesome. Okay. Um, so this is two and a half inches wide. I don't want this to be the full width. I want to see it on the background. So if I have the coffee dyed paper about two inches wide, I can see a quarter of an inch on each side. And we don't want it to be longer than this or even quite that tall. So we need to take some off the bottom. We want it to fit down in, tuck down in like a nice little tear book should. Okay. You know what? I'll probably put this envelope over here because it's a smaller pocket, shorter pocket. Come on. And then I'd probably put this over here where you could see it. Okay. So maybe if I turn that over, you can see. If I put it in that one, then uh, it's only going to come up to here, which is perfect. So you could choose whichever side you want. I think I'll do it this way so that we'll be able to see the contrast between the paper and the back when it's done. So we know we want our tear pages to be about two by, what's that? One, two, three and a quarter. So by just shy of three, I'm going to say. All right. So now I want that um, ruler back and we're going to start tearing some pages. Um, we said by just shy of three. And you could cut these. Doesn't matter. But tearing is awesome. Who doesn't like to tear paper? Tearing paper is so fun. I love tearing paper. Do. Yeah. Like, when could you tear paper and not get in trouble? You know, <laughs> that's why I like tearing paper. Well, that's why it's fun. We yeah. weren't supposed to do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when we were younger. And because this is easy, um, using just one piece of coffee dyed paper, but you could grab um, uh, ledger paper or, you know, anything else and add anything else to it. All right, and then this direction, I wonder if we can tear two sheets of coffee dyed paper at one time. Let's find out. It seems like you can. Dyed, Absolutely can. Get, um, stronger. The paper seems to get stronger after they're coffee dyed. There we you go. Think so? Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, in a way it's more brittle, but, but it's I, just seems. Well, do you soak yours all the way? Um, when I've made it, uh, I only spray yeah. it. The, I didn't make this. I only spray it too. I love um, trading with people, and but the people that I've traded with, they soak it. They soak it and dry it either outside. Yeah. One gal was in Hawaii and she just dried it outside. Um, another one back east and she dried it in her oven. But I love trading people. Yeah, <laughs> Margie, it is a good mad um, activity. I will agree with that. Um, I like trading people like I had a bunch of wallpaper and I didn't want to take time to coffee dye paper, but I needed some. So I said, does anybody want to swap wallpaper for coffee dyed paper? And they are happy to coffee dye. If they're That's a great idea. But then nobody has to if they don't want to. But if they want to, yay. And I right. they the wallpaper because they didn't have any. So, yeah, I think that's a good mad activity, honestly. Now, I'm going to move these around just so that they're not exactly by the one that they were next to or torn with because then they kind of stick together, you know, and we want them all coming apart. Move what around? The little pieces of paper. Uh, now I've got a whole stack of oh. two by threes and I'm going to um, rearrange their order. That's all I'm doing is rearranging their order. Okay. And I'm going to set that right there. And I'm going to grab this miniature stapler that I think is nearby. <laughs> That I hope is nearby because I forgot to make sure it was nearby. I want my paper to dry. Oh, there it is. Okay. My paper won't dry. Won't dry. Oh, you mean the glue? Well, I used a baby wipe because I grabbed ink and it was like oh. ink, like a lot of ink, <laughs> like, like, like an ink party right there. So I had to wipe some of it away and it's that wallpaper uh, and it's uh, still damp. Yeah. So it looks darker because it's damp. Yeah. That's it's hard a, to, it'll it's dry. Hard to see. It'll dry. Yep, it will. Archie, who are you calling OCD? Not, not, no, not ever, not. <laughs> I'm moment. not. Not for a moment? <laughs> no. Yeah. I am so not. My um, Amy is. Yay, Amy got to do, use her pretty stapler. Yeah, so pretty. pretty Yay. Pretty. Oh, the one I gave you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Margie, I can be um quite OCD. <laughs> Sometimes I like to just tear paper, just rip it and do whatever. Other times I want to cut it exactly perfectly straight. It all depends on what I'm making with it and what mood I'm in, I think. Okay, so there's our... And Marianne calls me the Grunch Queen. <laughs> uh, I do like grunge. I do like grunge. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. Okay, what else do we have in here? We've got we got the mini, the tiny little uh, folded tuck spot. We've got us a, a tiny little envelope. We've got us a tear pad. There's a couple of tags in here, two of them. And there's um, a journaling card with a belly band and another journaling card um, stuck into it. So let's, we got lots of things that'll work for as belly bands here. Let's make a journaling card. And I think that this side would be easiest to journal on. So should we do it the size of the uh, of the book itself? Like or how how big are we doing yeah. that journal? That we know that the book is four inches tall, so we don't want it to be quite that tall because we want it to stay within the book, the folio. And uh -huh. we know that each one of those okay. sections is approximately three inches wide, so we don't want it to be so wide because it'll you know, obstruct it from folding. So we want to be right. shorter than four inches. So we know we can okay. off and we know it's four inches. So it's too tall. So we know we need to take some off of that direction, but I'm not going to take that off first. I want to first take off the width that we want to use and then just shorten that card because that leaves this together as a big piece down. Here. Okay. So um, we know it's about three inches wide. I'm going to go about two and a half inches. Okay, and now, now I'm going to go shorten it and make it um, about three and a half inches tall. 
Okay. About that much. Now, I <clears throat> really do like to round the corners of this time. I do too. I am a corner rounder. I'm going to use my corner rounder. I am too. Or corner something or other. If there's all the different designs. I actually like to do it on this one too. So I'll probably. I, I like to make little mini postcards. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of postcard stamps, I think, on those. Okay. I have one, but it's like Here's full size. Our little journal uh, spot. And this is a good side to journal on. So I'm going to turn that over so that can be the back. This can be the front. And we want our silly band to be in front. That's not quite long enough. None of these pieces are quite long enough. So I'm going to cut the belly band off of this one. And we only need a thin strip of belly band. So. And no, that really can be as wide as you want. I made it about a quarter of an inch. Okay. So really, it's just going to go right there like that. So let me cut this. Oh, you have the mini postcard stamps, Margie? I love postcard stamps. Oh, They're so cute. I can't see the chat anymore. It keeps disconnecting. Oh, no. Do you think that's your phone overheating? No, it's my computer is completely hooked to the wall. It should not be. It's got to be YouTube oh. or my internet. It's one or the other. YouTube oh. or internet. It's Saturday night. A lot yeah. of people partying on here. Well, <laughs> yeah. So is that what we get for choosing Saturday night? Because that's the night everybody wants. I okay. guess. Okay. I guess. I'm going to glue the belly band down by just putting a tiny bit of our glitter glue on both ends. Bring it back here. And since I cut it off while it was on there, I can just line one edge up. And when I put the other one down, I know that it's going to be exactly where it should be as long as it's centered or, you know, kind of sort of centered, kind of close to centered. Okay. So there's my journal card with, <laughs> I love it. Party. We're having a we are. Does everybody have a drink? We should have a toast. We should have a, a worldwide toast one night. Have you seen I don't this? drink a lot, but I think it would be worth it with my sisters here. This is Fresca. It's peach citrus Fresca. No sugar. Awesome. What? Yeah. And it's really, really good. I got good. to tear something. Cool. All right. We need a little mini journal card to go under this belly band like this one. So I'm going to look at our little pieces. I, I can hear Margie keeps yelling at me. Close up the glue. <gasps> Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Margie, I'm a diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I, I'm a pepper. You're a pepper. He's a pepper. She's a pepper. Wouldn't you like to be a pepper too? Yes, I am a diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I snapped you. Funny. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we're going to make us a mini journal card to go in here. And... Let's see how big, how big. So Marianne, I don't know if you've noticed the time, but yes. I think we're, we're yes. pretty well over. Past <laughs> over. All right. Let's, we just up. don't want to keep anybody up. You know, like we, we can, yeah. we can Ooh, keep crafting cool. all the time, but. Oh, yeah. Yay. You are a diet Dr. Pepper. Yeah. I knew there I can't was see the chat. Margaret Driving me nuts. Pepper girl too. Always, and I've noticed that it even says getting diet. Dr. Uh, it says, I'm what? gonna pop out of chat and try to pop back in, okay? Okay, because I can't see it. Margie says she's gonna be up for a while. How's Amy? Amy, are you up for a while? She's got a blue. Are you partying with us, Amy? A while. <laughs> I, I think we must have lost Sarah because Sarah would be up till midnight. Marianne, we have six people, it says. So I, I just don't know who I'm looking. That's so weird get, because mine get, says five. It, okay, I popped out and popped back in and it's still. Huh. Um, 
Yeah. It says, please, please try again later. That's <laughs> funny. Um, Margie, you came to the right place because we're both that way too. Night owl. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes when the world gets all quiet and goes to sleep, that's when my most creative stuff comes. Uh -huh. Margie, you awake alive as well. I wonder if um, yours is just so yeah. far that it hasn't caught up to the five. Okay. How, you wonder if, oh, well, I'm still on good night from uh, Shirley. No. Oh. So maybe your it's number far people, back. Maybe your number of people hasn't caught up either because we've been full five. Okay, so um, this is our our journal card that will go in here. We could stamp a sentiment on here, or we could. That's funny. I picked up a stamp. <laughs> do a sentiment on there, but that will go. I'm going to put that in the far left pocket. Okay. So I don't have anything in the second pocket yet because that's where I had um, the big envelope and I put it over there. And so this is over here as well. And the tear book is there, but we still need some tags because we still got stuff here and we don't have any tags. So we can put a couple of tags in this one right here. Yeah, we can hardly... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Do, I got a mess. I'm gonna do some inking and some embellishing on these so that you can see. Oh, I forgot to glue my. I forgot to glue my very outside edge right here. I thought I did that, but apparently I did not. Well, Margie, do you um, use the jelly plates? Do you do? Um, you know, paint or the stencils or something else on jelly plates. I know you've seen Linda do them a ton of times because she does them a lot of Thursdays. But I wonder if you do that as well. No, you have not. Is that something you're interested in learning about from basics? Or is that something that really doesn't... You know, sometimes we think something is really cool, but other people, it just doesn't interest. Okay, so... If I she's like us, she probably has that art brain that wants to try everything still, I would guess. She, okay, she has a jelly plate. Margie has a jelly plate and has never used it. See? So, just like that. Okay, well, then the question becomes, why um, not really interested, have a texture thing, and do not like that? Okay, so the, oh, so I'm there. How I, did you buy it? Well, I can read that a couple of different ways. You have a texture thing, like an OCD texture thing, because I know people who you know don't and just don't like it because it is that way. Um, Jello that texture, or is it that you have a texture thing, like a texture plate or something that does texture, and so you don't like the jelly plate because you have something that will do that otherwise. I'm thinking it might be of a thing about texture that that's just kind of weird. You know, it feels weird. It's jello. Texture. Yeah. And you don't like to deal with it because it's, yeah, I don't like the texture of paint when it's dried. I can totally get that. I can totally see that. Yeah. I, that's, that's really understandable. I think a lot of people um, are like that. Okay. So if you don't like the texture of paint when it's dried, then you probably wouldn't like other texture of other other mediums when they were dried. Is that correct? Okay, I'm gonna make a couple of tags. Um mm -mm. Yeah, it's messy and can't deal with that either. <laughs> I love Margie. She does <laughs> Oh, yeah. I, I totally get you, Margie. I totally get you. It may be, I love when others do it, but I just don't really want to go into it. Okay. Yeah, sometimes things are fun to watch and not dry. Oh, I love watching gel plate uh, videos. I, I probably watched uh, 500 of them before I finally got a gel plate. Yeah? Yeah, oh, I love watching them. On high speed. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to make this a two inch. I'm going to make this a two inch tag. You make, you watch the jelly 
ones on high speed. Is that what yes. you said? Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> okay. so, um, so Margie, if we do jelly plates one night and we experiment with stuff and just make a total mess of ourselves, because, you know, <laughs> I'm all for doing things. See, I watch people do things and I think, oh, you know, they're perfect at it. You know, they're an expert. And, you know, oh, I'm not for me. So <laughs> we like Sharon and I like doing things that we've never done before and just trying them so everybody can see what a mess we make too or how it flops. Just like it flops, you know. I mean, it didn't flop for me. And I'm like, but it didn't flop when she thought or when she did the tutorial. I did not have that centered. Thought maybe if I got a jelly plate, I might have a good day and try it. But yeah, <laughs> I haven't. I keep grabbing the same color paint and this keeps seem uh, like the same stencils because they're my favorites. Uh -huh. So they all end up looking the same if I don't like uh -huh. step out of that comfort right. level. Well, yeah. Mark, nobody says you have to try it. I don't care. No, no, no. It doesn't matter. No, you don't have to try it. We're gonna have a day where we where we do it though. But if, um, I, yeah. Okay, that was my question, Margie. Um, would would you want to watch it if we make a total mess of ourselves, make a total fool <laughs> by trying things out for the first time? Yes, she would love watching us make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> She'd be happy to watch. I just dropped us my hand. And oh, okay. I love the stuff Linda makes. Yeah. Yeah. She makes some cool stuff and she makes it look really easy. Doesn't she? <laughs> yeah. She's Who? been doing it a while. Linda Israel. She's been doing it a while and she makes it look really easy because she doesn't even have to think about what she's doing. She just does it because she's done it so much, but then, you know, so the rest of us will take it. And I dropped my ink on the floor. It doesn't work quite that easy. Ah, found it. Okay. Let's see. I want to know, I'm going to, I think I'm going to do this again. See if I can get one of these cut out of this shape. I'm always cutting upside down so that I can see the shape I'm cutting. Make sure it's fitting in the paper. Okay. So there's a nice little shape there. And that will give me something to put either out here or on the back or maybe on the front maybe this is a book plate maybe that should be a book plate on the front huh i might even have a little metal thing that would go around it how cool would that be and love looking, it so i'm looking at these scraps and i just want to i want to try to use them i want to make as many you know cool little things as i can so i'm looking right here and i got plenty of space here what if i were to take something could probably even go a little longer than that not long enough okay what if i did that and i made a whole nother tuck spot right there could i that. uh I, my video is so lagged that i'm not i yeah. can't see what you're Don't doing so i it. have to wait <laughs> yeah then look at it but you're hearing it so you know when you see yeah it, i'm hearing it yeah it'll all make sense Okay. Oh, I'm just saying I can't, uh, if you ask me any questions I, about what you're doing currently, I, I can only hear you. <laughs> no way. You're, doing, you're staying up all night just waiting for you. <laughs> oh, we have new people. Julie Parker. Hey, Julie. How, Julie. Was, lunch? how was lunch? Now, now you got to go back and watch the whole thing. <laughs> To see the stencils that we did with Sharon and then the beginning of this one. Um, yeah, a little bit of technical difficulty made it made it a little rough. Sharon's uh, about a minute behind. <laughs> in what well, in the in the video. And then I also cannot see the comments. And I've, oh, I've gone in and out. That's, and won't let that's me. frustrating. Yeah. And yeah, Julie just popped in. What's cool, though, is when you when you're not looking at it and you're just listening, it's real fun because you answer it immediately. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not looking at it. Yeah, um, okay. so I, I refuse. Tuck spot right here, and I've got another little long strip here. I'm thinking I could put that right it here as a belly band. Over here. Yeah, and that's the exact right height too. So let's just found a sink mat that had flowers would be great on the gel plate. Ooh, 
Ooh, that's a great idea. Yeah, we were just talking about gel plates because Margie has one. And Julie knows Margie Falouk, too, from um, Linda Israel's group. That's where we all met. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Julie will try it with us. She's not afraid to make a mess or fool of herself. <laughs> she ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> yeah, really. Um, yeah, Julie, uh, we were asking Falouk if she would be interested in watching if we did gel plates one night and just made total messes of ourselves. <laughs> what we do that's what we do but that's the fun i sure hope the sink comes off <laughs> all right i feel like my desk is a huge mess and i can't find anything right now well yeah i that's what yeah we do this all right i have one more spot back here but if i put this one back here i've, I've got one more spot up here that doesn't have anything in it and i've got i think i'll put that right there on front. <laughs> and got some scraps here. Got to figure out what I can do with those scraps to put something in that one last pocket. There we go. Okay, there's a book plate up front. Actually, I've got two pockets because I went and created this one. And this one seems to uh, melt into the background. Um, let's see, you just put these tiny little things. I mean, those are tiny notes. We can make, we can make tiny tags out of them though. And since we're doing our miniatures, let's do that. Let's do That's like this. What I'm currently working on. And like this. Yep. And... Where is my crocodile? I make a bookmark. <laughs> Margie, that's how we are right up to the time that we go live. We have a postage stamp size place to work on our table because we've both been in here all day doing all kinds of stuff. And then it's time to go and we're like, oh no. And we clear everything off, move it away. <laughs> and we can't find anything because it's not on our desk. Yep. But if we left it here, you wouldn't be able to see a thing. I keep everything on trays so I can pull trays away when I'm ready. Yeah. Uh, I so know that's that's a weird cool. way to do it, but... No, it's, not, it's, it's actually not. I typically have them not in trays, but in bins, you know, where mm -hmm. things are stored. Um, the crocodile has two different size hole punches, and this is the smaller one. But I... I wonder if there's a hole punch that's smaller than that. Cause I would really like one that's just a tiny bit tinier than that. If there is one. Oh, I did that too. Deep. Is about, well, that's an eighth of an inch. That's, a, that's an eighth of an inch hole right there. So that's pretty big. I would love to find a 16 inch hole punch, 16 inch hole punch. And I've been looking and I can't find one anywhere. I've got a teeny tiny one, but I couldn't tell you what size it is. It's so small. That's probably a sixteenth of an inch because an eighth of an inch is still pretty large. Okay, I don't even I'm remember where I got this. Tag right here. What size is this? Do you see it? Um, no. Put it towards your desk, not down, but out, out from you. There you go. Now up. Nope. When you bring it close to you like that, I can't see it. Oh, okay. Okay, yep, there you go. Now straight up towards the camera. I'm sure it's super clear for them. But okay. Um yeah, I kind of think that that one's smaller than this one. I agree. It's pretty small. I think there is a there is a tinier one than this one. I've seen it. I have seen It barely people, fits my big needle. Yeah. I have seen yeah. people use a smaller um punch. I'm I don't, I can't picture anything smaller than this. Anything smaller than this would be a needle. Well, that's <laughs> the size that I want. I, you know, like a sixteenth of an inch. Uh huh. Can you have your ruler. Can you just put it up next to the ruler? Maybe. Because Hold on. This one's that would about be clever. Inch. <laughs> Hold on, just a sec. <laughs> so I got a tag here, and I got a tag here. Hmm. You know I what? want my tiniest I little bit of lace here. I had a little idea 
I'm gonna. I'm gonna freeze. Not a big idea. No, nope, it's just, just a little tiny, idea. Tiny little mini idea. Okay. You go, girl. Oh, Julie has a tiny one too. Okay, I can't. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take this last piece right here, and I'm gonna cut it the same length as this tag. And I'm gonna cut the corners off to make it a tag. Okay. All right, and I'm gonna hole punch it. A mini idea for my mini folio. Okay, all right, so now I've got two tags. One's a little fatter than the other, but doesn't matter. We're not prejudiced. And I love making minis. Yeah. And now I'm going to take this coffee dyed paper and I'm going to make it the same size, which is what? It's about a little less than an inch by two inches. All right. Where's that ruler again? We got to tear a little less than an inch. But how big is this? Two, four. Uh, a little less than an inch. One, two, three, four. Okay. By two inches. I'm going to use a mini queen of hearts. Cool. She is mine. <laughs> All right. There's our two inch mark. And now let's see if we can do this at a little less than an inch on each one of these. <laughs> this would have been easier just to put it on the... Uh, paper trimmer and snip, 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 snip. <laughs> It'd have been a lot faster <laughs> for sure. You're proud of yourself. Uh, no, the tearing is there. <laughs> it would have been a whole lot easier, quicker to put it on the paper trimmer. But I feel like tearing paper. Yeah, a mini tear pad, except, oops, see, see what happens? Now it didn't tear straight. Except, um, I'm not going to staple it on. Maybe I just need to learn how to tear. <laughs> you have to focus when you tear, because if you don't push down one side. I always do everything like cutting my bangs. Oh, gee. There's a reason I don't cut my bangs. <laughs> yeah, I love okay. tearing paper. So now I got a few of those. I'm going to put them in here and punch the little hole, punch the tiny little hole in them too. Oh, my fingers are not going that direction. All right, hang on. Actually, I need to cut, I need to cut them tag shape too. There's one corner. I got little bits and pieces flying everywhere. Okay, now let's get them in there. Line up our hole puncher, and boom, there we go. Okay. Did you just hear that? Hear what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you hear? Sharon, teeny tiny notepad, but I'm going to... Okay, so I've got a front cover and a back cover and all the teeny tiny little notepads and uh, papers in between. And now I'm going to tie that together with a teeny tiny little string. Oh, here, I've got some pink thread still on the... Still, <laughs> I've got pink thread still on the needle. Ouch. I'm trying to decide what my style is here. So I'm going to just thread this through here. There we nope, go. that's not what I want to do. I what want to I said um, I'm trying to decide what my style is right yeah. now here on this I'm, I'm making a choice I'm winging it okay what this is what I want I'm just winging it making this up as I go because it was just a teeny tiny idea 1.5 millimeter is your tiny hole punch okay so I folded this over like it was a ribbon and now I want to, if I can get those holes lined up. 
So I can get all those holes lined up. I want to see if I can put this through. Come on. Should probably use the other end because it's not rounded. Oh, it worked. Boop, boop. Okay. I mean, actual ribbon would go through there, but I've got thread right here. So why go find actual ribbon? All right. And then I'm going to pull that through. Like okay. I, I refreshed, guys. Can you hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> yeah. I totally lost everything there. Really? Ah, oh, so you missed that. It worked. It worked. Okay. So I've got a teeny tiny little notepad. It's got a front cover and mm, five or six pages of coffee dyed paper and then a teeny tiny back cover margie can hear you julie can hear you okay and it's held together with this teeny tiny little string it's actually thread and so you can ride on it flip it over ride on it flip it over <laughs> so i'm gonna tie did you guys see my teeny tiny little card is that the one you're working on now Let's see. All right. I'm going to tie a knot in that so that the thread stays where I want it. And now if I were to turn it over to write on them, then the papers aren't going to push the thread. So the thread comes open and it all falls off. Perfect. That worked. <laughs> She's rolling on the floor laughing at our teeny tinies. I love it. Found my tribe. That's exactly Margie. We know we know that we are um an original. What? I keep losing my so I'm just doing uh oh. Do you have audio? Did you lose audio? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Gosh. Because it's okay. it keeps kicking me out. Try it again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Maybe. Margie, yeah, Margie, we know that we are the teeny tiny tribe. I love it. Yes. <laughs> or as my mom used to say, cover your ears if you're offended easy, the itty bitty titty committee. <laughs> <laughs> my mom used to tell me that when we were in junior high that to make me feel better. <laughs> yeah, we know that we are an original bunch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and we like those originals that are like us to come join the tribe. <laughs> exactly. That's the point. <laughs> so here's, I'm not going to embellish it any more than that because, you know, it can be done later or if you want to. But we've got now, oh, that's not where I meant to put that. I meant to put it out here to be a book plate. Wow. See, I must be getting tired. Wasn't even paying attention. That's okay. It can go right there with it with a sentiment on it. A tiny I mean, book plate? Yeah, yeah, a tiny book plate. And I meant to put it on the front, but I forgot that I had to fold it twice to get to the front. So there's the folio. Opens this way. And we'll tuck, probably do some coffee dyed paper and tuck that in there and put a sentiment there. And you could, the book plate could be on the inside of the front cover, right? That way it's not on the outside where everybody the has what? the book plate. Oh, yeah, they can be on the inside of the front cover, too. Okay. You A lot of times you get a, this book belongs to right there. Oh, yeah, that's not on the cover. So that's perfect on the yeah. inside. Okay. And then we open it all the way. Um, no, Julie, I didn't. This is actually just a piece of paper out of um, a paper stack. And I, when I make these, I like having something that is double-sided so that you can... You know, always see the contrast. Here's the other one that I had made ahead of time. And this one, double-sided, but the back side is just kind of a solid. It can be wherever I want it to be. Thank you, Margie. Yes, and absolutely. Yeah, really, um, you'll see when you go back and watch it how to how to cut this off and get the pocket you know, perfect for that. It cuts its own angle. And I, I don't know if on camera this is hard to see because they're the same color, but they are very different in their design. So in person, I can definitely see the contrast of the front and back, but it might not come off as, as much contrast um, in the, uh, you know, on camera. I don't know. I'm going to have to watch it back to see. 
but so there's this one that's the same as the back. This side is the same oh, as I need the front. Glue. So all of this really was from one piece of 12 by 12 paper, except this for the tear pad. And that came from a one piece of eight and a half by 11 coffee dyed paper. And so we did that. And then since we still have that coffee dyed paper, we cut some for the teeny tiny notepad. We still have some, so I might have to make another teeny tiny thing. Wish I had ready-made teeny double side. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Your, your, the bee stuff that you've done is so pretty. Really done a great job. There you go. So that's the folio. So then if, if you want to keep it like this, you can tie a ribbon around it or um, a hairband elastic, or you could, I don't want to punch holes and do ties because if I punch a hole here, then when I go to open it, it's in here and it blocks these from opening or putting things in the, the tuck. Oh, I forgot to glue the bottom of this pocket. I made it like a belly band on the bottom. <laughs> that needs to be glued down. Yeah, it must be getting late, Sharon, because, you know, brain's probably not uh, firing on all cylinders now. Pretty sure mine gave up a while ago. <laughs> yeah. I just get goofy at this point. Yeah, me too. Uh, okay, so now the bottom's down. Now it's a pocket, not a belly band. <laughs> there we go. A belly band is okay too, though, ladies. A decorated paper clip. That's a great idea, Julie. That would work in here too. So the idea, now let me look at what we have left. Okay, this is literally all I have left from the 12 by 12 piece of paper. We have used everything except these scraps right here. However... However, as Julie said, paperclip, if we're using the 112 by 12, but we're also using an 8.5 by 11, then what if I used an 8.5 by 11 to be part of that? All right. Um, I have ink all over me and I'm yeah. my desk is a mess. That just means a fun time was had by all. That's I, I say that all the time, Marianne. I agree. I and do. a fun time was had by all. Yep. Yep. Okay, that and then we could put something there to cover that. Uh, mm, mm, mm. so has everybody had a good time i think i am finally goofy is fun yes i am finally mm. caught up that's awesome oh uh, sorry margie margie did say that first a decorated paper clip yep i like that margie that's that's exactly what i'm gonna do look at this we're gonna make us a decorated paper clip right here awesome right here so on the spot Good. I made this cute little car or this cute little tag. It's like a long one, bookmark style. Okay. Um, with my little mini Queen of Hearts card that I've been saving forever because this is my yeah. book, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then I made a little note card with one of my Fomemo girls. Uh huh. And and lots of hearts here. Um, and I really like them. We lost. I gotta video. ink them up. We lost. Video. Did ya? Yep, we oh did. Oh my gosh, what is wrong with this? Is know. it could it be the that too many people are using internet around here? Um, I have really bad internet. I can't wait till our contract is maybe, up. Maybe, I mean, it, you know, I suppose it could be your service, your local service. We don't have we, uh, our the company we go through. We are sorry that we went through when we moved to this town, yeah. and no one likes them. Um, but hopefully, we'll have a new internet. All service right. provider in November when our two-year contract is up. Uh, I gotta find a paper clip. Paper clip, paper clip. I'll hand you one here, but I don't think it'll work. Okay. <laughs> and I'm going Sorry. To, I'm going to use a little paper clip. <laughs> okay. Because you have to have a little one. It's a little thing you're making. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. 
It's so it's cute. Just a little bass backwards, but it'll work. A little bass backwards. Yep, it's a little bass backwards, but it'll work. It, yeah. <laughs> It'll work. All right. So I'm going to glue. That's, oh, that may be the right length. Huh. It may actually be the right length. I wish I would have inked these hearts before I put them on. Yeah, I do that all the time. Ah. Uh, tiny paper. Book, now that means. Teeny tiny book. What's that? It's a teeny tiny paper clip for a teeny tiny book. That's right. I have teeny tiny clothespins. I'll let you use one of those too. Oh yeah, I do too. Margie, that this was cute great. out of the top. <laughs> this was a really great idea, Margie. Thank you for saying. Thank you for speaking up and saying. I like it. Last week, uh, she made a mini book, and I made a teeny tiny mini book plate to go with it afterwards, and shared the picture <laughs> online, and it was so cute. It was the tiniest little. It was. It was like a half an inch book clay yeah. it was so cute <laughs> yeah it was very cute okay so there it is but let's see there's our paper clip back there but i'm Lost going video to again. Put something right here i know what i'm going to put oh i need to put something in here too um so it makes that a frame let's see uh first i'm going to put something in here so it doesn't dry out <laughs> Bass awkward. You say that all the time. I really do. Oh my goodness. So I think we're just not going to have video for me because I've refreshed several times, but I am up on the comments now. But, so I'm oh, caught up there. You can see comments now, but no video. Right. I get one or the other, apparently. <laughs> oh, how cute. Tiny paper clip, one centimeter long. Oh, cuteness. There oh, we go. Oh, I am going to find. That's right. I was going to measure this little drawer here um something mini yes i am looking for in my little drawer i'm looking for some little mushrooms yeah this is the smallest notch on my on my ruler this punch by the way oh yeah yeah this notch on your ruler that is a 16th of an inch well oh. this ruler has three sides so i was looking to see which okay. Which one? Well, yeah, and it is a sixteenth you know, of an inch. If you go to half inch, divide that in half, you got a quarter inch. Divide that in half, you've got an eighth of an inch. If you can, right. kill, if you can divide that one more time, and that's the size of it. That's the size I want. That little tiny sixteenth. So a needle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except, Sorry. <laughs> I have three all sitting here on my desk. Yeah. But so you I'm, have one. Well, no, I have an all. That's not a hole punch. <laughs> it, it doesn't punch. All right. OCD. It does not punch. Uh -huh, the uh -huh. I want a clean hole. This is actually, a, it's a, the smallest one. Yes. Yeah. It is the smallest one. Yep. <clears throat> but, but you know what? Sometimes you just want a, a hole that is punched clean, not just, you know, poked through with a, an awl. Right. Right. Because you get that extra. Yeah. I'm just giving you a hard time. It's fun. I know. <laughs> and I look right back. <laughs> uh, funny. All right. Uh, there's got to be uh, just the right mushroom in here. Just the right much. Oh, I know I saw some really tiny ones before, and now all I can find are the big ones. You see this mess on my desk? It's because I don't have my regular tray sitting here that I would put things in. So I'm like, oh my gosh, where do I put this? Aaron. <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> Aaron. Yeah? We can't see the mess on your desk. You have no video, remember? Oh, that's right. Good. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> One point that's wonderful. Meters. Julie says it's 1.5 millimeters. That's pretty much what I'm looking for in that tiny little punch. Okay. Huh. I know I'm going to have to, I've, I have looked um, several times, several places, but I don't know if I've searched Amazon. So probably not. That may be where I'm going to find it. Unfortunately, they have everything, and that's why we keep going to them. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd rather go to a, a local business, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There we go. That's what I'm looking for for the corner. This one right here. Look at that. Got the back off. First try. <laughs> yeah, Margie says, so you can say your desk is pristine and we would never know the difference. Yeah, my desk is so clean now. <laughs> uh, I'm actually cleaning it up as we as we uh, are closing soon. So That's hilarious. Oh, I have this. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put that little mushroom in the corner and I'm going to cut off the little overhang edges. So now you don't can't really tell that it's missing that little piece of the frame, right? Tell please tell me that worked. <laughs> I will look up Fiskars, Julie. That's the brand that yours is. But I still that's the kind I have. In the middle, is it? It's still like one yeah. in the middle of the frame, but now it's got to be. Oh, now it's got to be the right one to work with. That one over on the corner. <laughs> oh, maybe this. Maybe here's another tiny one. Can you see that one against? Yeah, you kind of. But I wonder if it should be taller than this one over on the corner. Um. Uh, there's a funky mushroom. All right. Color on that kind of works too. Watch oh. out for those funky mushrooms. How is that? Does that work? Julie, Margie, does that work? We'll have to wait for the delay for them to... She said yes, that one. Yeah or no. Okay. I like it. Cut mushrooms. Okay. I think she meant cute. <laughs> Cut the mushrooms. We're making <laughs> cute. Oh, mushroom soup sounds so good. I love mushroom soup. Home, we, uh, uh, I make that with mushroom wild soup. mushrooms. Not out of a can. Homemade mushroom soup. No, if I, I make it and put oh, it in the freezer to cook with. Out. Check that out. That's awesome. There it is. There's the tiny little mushroom paper clip. I love it. Okay, so maybe this paper clip holds the whole thing together that's a good idea that my husband's calling <laughs> Ta -da! tell him you're drunk with crafting <laughs> and he'll believe it yeah all right i think i'm it's all the glue i think i'm calling it good at that i really like all that. right that was a that was a fantastic idea margie thank you it's so cute. Mini paper, uh, mini paper clip. That really worked. Yeah, that really did work. I really like that oval punch, Marianne. Yeah, I do too. I do yeah. too. It's great to put behind a sentiment or, you know, I really like using the skeleton. It's a perfect frame. Yeah, it is. I really want one of those tag punches. I think they're really oh, uh, like clever. Like the one, one that does the three that's on your desk. Yeah. 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 I have this one that does the three tags, three different sizes. And then I have one like this that does like the, um, the band that, what do you call it? The banner or the bottom, like the bottom of um, awards. The uh, they flags. Come, they come. Yeah. To, it's the flags. Yeah. I have uh -huh. one that does the three sizes of flags. I just cut those. I just fold whatever ribbon or whatever in half and just cut them. Yeah. Well, when I do it out of paper, I don't want to fold them in half because I don't want to crease down the middle. <laughs> uh huh. All right. Margie's going to go make a mini folio or 10. <laughs> or 10. Yeah. Do you have, have you done any toilet paper roll videos? I did actually, Julie. And um, I was hoping to get that one loaded by tomorrow morning. I have another one that's ready to go. But uh, I was having difficulty um, editing my, uh, there was just a problem I had with my computer today. Is yours I need to get my own set up. What's is that? Your toilet, is your all about going to go up tomorrow morning? I'm hoping the one with the, the, the toilet the, yeah. or the paper towel roll will. Yeah. But um, if, I, if it doesn't get loaded, 
uh, it'll be the other one. Okay. Is the other one loaded? The other one is loaded. Yes. Um, well, even if you have to load it in the morning when it's not as busy as it is tonight. Right. You might have better luck loading it in the morning. Yeah. yeah. And so I've got a second one ready to go, Julie, for toilet paper rolls that we'll probably drop on Monday. Fishtail. Is that really what that's called? Fishtail? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Do you, let me grab that. I think. Oh, uh, your request to demonstrate the wax paper method. I did not. Uh, I haven't actually been to Facebook today. I was kind of busy doing domestic stuff. And then it was time for the live. So I will definitely, uh, yes, please do that. I would love to see that. This one, um, Margie? Uh, the, yeah. The Are you wanting to do it yourself or do you want one of us to do it? You're talking to Julie? Yeah. I think it's, she wants, she wants me to do it. Okay. Well, then I will, uh, uh, play with, I will play with that and, uh, uh, Margie, make it an upcoming video. <laughs> uh, um, no, I don't, but I do know about encaustic art and I can figure that out. So I, I can pretty much figure whatever out. Um, I just, I, I like playing with it and coming up with uh, different uh, methods uh, so that everybody, if they don't have whatever material can get involved, like if they don't have a, a you know, the, any of the supplies that oh, we might need. Karen, so seen, I was, have you seen somebody do it on wax paper before? I have, I have, well, I have. Yes. Okay. okay. So, you know, it works. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then there's another option with beeswax, which I have a pile. Okay. I have a whole box of encaustic stuff downstairs. I haven't played with yet. So Hard I could completely do down. that. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> banner. This is the, the banner. Um, yeah, the banner. that's what I've always called it, a banner. Yeah, she typed bammer. <laughs> Domestic yeah. stuff. What the heck is that? Yeah. Don't know. I know. I put it off and put it off. And then I was like, yeah, I should feed my family. I, I have my husband's at work and then I have my teenage stepdaughter and I've been teaching her how to cook. So I kind of had some, you know, stepmommy sort of things to do. And, and, yeah. you know, we all need laundry. So <laughs> I think you better call it a night. Cause I got a ton of stuff to do tomorrow. And if I stay up all night, I'm not going to be any good tomorrow. Yeah. No. So I will have a video out tomorrow one way, one or the other. I will have out just so y'all know to watch for that tomorrow. Okay. okay. Sounds great. And then I'll have another, um, all about out on Monday, Monday morning. Okay, cool. Yeah. I so, know I've got two, uh, in the pocket right now. So we're trying to get ahead so we can have them, lots of videos of them, ready. Right. What's Julie, that? Popping in after lunch. I know that uh, I probably had to push him to get home early. <laughs> and Margie, thanks for coming in. I It's really fun chatting with you because you get me. <laughs> so. Yes. Thank you so much. And yeah, to the you. other Amy uh, cousin, mm -hmm. I love you. And I'm glad you got to hang out with us. Yes. And yeah. there's uh, four other people lurking in the background that I would like to say uh, thank you so much for coming. And if yeah. if everybody could go in and give us a thumbs up or um, yeah. Uh, just, yeah. And as soon as we log out, if you have a minute to go back in and put a comment on, but a thumbs up will really help. It'll really help um, YouTube to start putting it in front of people so that we can get more of, you know, the uh, original people like us in our tiny tribe <laughs> yeah it's just we that. don't come up on a search because there's so many and if they see yeah. the traffic it helps um, it's like it. <laughs> these comments should count but they don't they don't show up at all nope. um in the regular comments so nope. i know it's sad yeah nope. but thank you hugs and blessings to you as well thanks guys we really appreciate you being here and sharing Saturday night with us. And, and uh, yeah. we'll, we'll definitely be back next Saturday. And yeah. And Julie, I need to talk to you after this. 
<laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Anything in particular you'd like to see next Saturday, let us know. Otherwise, we'll post in the group um, so you'll know what to what to have. Okay. Thank you so much and good night. All right, good night, everybody. And stay happy paper, people. <laughs>